Hello and welcome back to Fresh Off The Real. My name is Hyperlink <laughs> Hacker. My name is Pineapples Hacker. And we have a special guest with us today, a fellow hacker. It's Toon Boy. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm real busy hacking. It's me, Toon Boy, hacking the local cineplexes of Canada. He's he's in the mainframe, guys. He's in the mainframe. <laughs> Oh, Howdy, man. Uh, it's, it's been a while we, we, that we haven't uh, recorded an episode here, but uh, we're finally back and uh, hopefully in full swing once more. And uh, we're back with uh, our favorite guest, of course. Like, we're going to introduce him for real now. It's Stefano. Everybody, welcome Stefano once again. Clap, clap. <gasps> clap, clap. I'm your favorite. I'm you're also your our only. only. Guest. <laughs> so, you're also the only. The, the list isn't only. We're getting many messages about about guest stars. So maybe it won't be lonely for long. Yeah, I took a look at that list. Jamie Lee Curtis. Holy shit! Guys. Wait, no spoilers! Spoilers! Yeah, spoilers! No spoilers. <laughs> I don't want to tell the good people that we're getting. Oh fuck! What's his name? One Piece character. <laughs> <laughs> Chopper, no. chopper, uh, chopper, chopper, chopper. The chopper's biggest fan, Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> chopper's biggest fan, Jamie Lee Curtis. And uh, since Stefano's on the show, you all know what that means. We're doing our 2023 year in review. This is gonna be a long one. We, uh, I thought we only watched like, I thought I only watched like 20 movies, but uh, I, I watched uh, a lot more, a lot more than I. We watched. Uh, we watched a lot of movies. It's been a year. A year of cinema, a year of movies. I said the same thing twice in a more profound way. A year of and cinema, a year of a, a year of film, if you would. A year of the motion picture. <laughs> uh, one of the big things that happened this year, well, in, like at the right at the beginning of 2024, I think like literally January 1st, 2024. Uh, Mickey Mouse, or more accurately, Steamboat Willie, is now public domain. Okay. That's insane to think about. That's crazy. Like, Disney straight up gave away their baby, you know? Well, I, I wouldn't say gave away. They didn't have a choice, right? Well, yeah, they didn't have a choice. I, wanted, I mean, one, they didn't have a choice, and two, it's not their main baby, right? Like, yeah, their main kinda... baby is, like, colored Mickey Mouse. You know, the red shorts, the big yellow shoes. Yeah, this is, like, Steamboat Willie with, like, the, the conductor's hat and everything. You could use Mickey without the hat, because he appears without the hat in the short. But it has to be the black and white Mickey. It can't be red It's short. not like it's Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey, right? Yeah. That's, that's, that's gonna come soon. <laughs> yeah, that's also coming up on 100 years, right? That's... Uh, it's very close. I'm He's sure out the Disney door. will end the world before that happens. It's fine. Walt Disney is currently turning in his grave. All right, so just like we did last year, we're going to go over all the movies we watched in 2023. Some of them we have episodes on. We're going to skip uh, movies we talked about on the podcast, and we're going to skip movies we rewatched last year. So just a... Uh, have things go a little quicker or else we'd probably be here for like four hours um <laughs> yeah so only um first time watches of 2023 doesn't need to have released in 2023 but we had to have watched it for the first time yeah that's pretty much uh that's pretty much it uh the only the only rewatch i'm gonna mention here is at the very beginning because i just want to talk about the first movie i watched last year which was glass onion it was a rewatch uh but that was the first movie i watched Good movie. Good fucking movie, but we have talked about it already. Did you guys do an episode on it? Mm. Good fucking question. Let's let's I find out. <laughs> no, we didn't. We didn't. We planned to. We planned to do a double feature on both um, Knives Out and Glass Onion. M like many of our plans, they uh, they fell through the cracks. So. Yeah. I mean, look, let's talk like like let's get the elephant out of the room, okay? It has been a long time. It's uh it's my fault. I'm sorry. I just I decided to go back to school and now I'm IT man. It happened. I am now I'm hacker boy. <laughs> <laughs> He's official hacker boy now. We're real hackers today. If you don't get that joke, we'll talk about it in a little bit in maybe two hours. <laughs> yeah, maybe two hours. Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, stay tuned. All right, let's get straight into it. Well, Pat, what was the first movie you watched last year? First movie I watched. We did an episode on actually, so I won't talk about it in depth but i watched uh, puss in boots the last wish i believe we watched that together all three of us if you want to hear our thoughts the episode is in our list go find it it's, it's a good movie nominated for an oscar did it win no no Pinocchio won. 
Ah. Let's go. Pinocchio. Huh? Let's yeah, go. let's go. Ah. Let's go, Pinocchio. I forgot the Oscars. <laughs> I forgot the Oscars. <laughs> I forgot they happened. I forgot that they're real. Yeah, well, they're they're happening again this year. So uh, maybe we'll do an episode on that hint, hint. I tapped my nose when I did that, but you couldn't see that. We're not showing webcams. We're not showing cameras. What are we? Some kind of fucking, what are we? Cold ones? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. It's cold cold ones. <laughs> With cold questions and even colder ways. Is it, isn't Cold Ones a, sh- uh, a podcast? No, Maybe. Cold Ones is the interview of like two guys sitting across a table and one of them is a celebrity and the hosts ask them questions as they eat. No, hot- no, that's Hot Ones. Yeah, you're thinking oh, about hot ones. No, one. I'm talking about cold ones. It's Max Mofo's podcast. Oh, I don't know who that is. It's it's a it's a podcast where they bring in special guests and they drink alcohol and they just shoot the shit. Oh yeah, I, I looked up uh, cold ones. Oh, it and exists. One of the episodes has Sean Evans. Oh wow. And and uh, the last one is Val Delphine. Huh. And all right, moving on. <laughs> Max, Good pay night. us for the plugin. The last episode was in October 2020. Yeah. Okay. So what other movies did you watch, Pat? <laughs> well, no, we're, we're talking about well, Stefano. What's the first movie you watched? We'll talk, let's talk about Oh, you. the first movie I watched in January, 20, at least in January, uh, was The Pale Blue Eye. What? A Edgar Wright. <laughs> Ed- <laughs> if I could explain. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's funny. It's a Edgar Wright uh, short story that was adapted into a screenplay by Netflix. Starring Christian Bale. And it's a self-insert. Edgar Poe, Edgar Allan Poe is a character in this, uh, in this story. It's a murder mystery. Solid movie. Really, really drawn out. But, like, solid at the same time. Like, it's a movie that, like, you'll occasionally, like, ah, if you're a, a bookworm. I was trying to find the terminology. If you're a bookworm and you love dark historia, watch The, the Pale Blue Eye. I, I looked up the movie on Letterboxd. Uh, and the most popular review is Edgar Allan Poe wants what Benoit Blanc has. <laughs> I, thought that was, I thought that was a funny connection to what we've talked about, but uh, yeah, there's a really yeah, cool I'll, twist though. I'll watch it. I'll give that a watch. Yeah, I actually do want. I want. I want to see that because that sounds. That sounds good. I like Edgar Allan Poe's stories. I have to do a whole class on him. <laughs> nice. And man, was he fucked up? <laughs> yeah, he was a little bit of a fucked up guy. <laughs> him and the H.P. Lovecraft should be in a room together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm. I'm sure if they. I don't know if what if they ever had the chance that they could have met i don't think so but if they could have i would have paid to see that <laughs> I, I like okay. how this podcast becomes just recommending each other movies like when it boils down to it yeah dude like the, when you love movies you love movies and when you talk about movies to people who also love movies all you end up doing is just talking about movies you haven't seen and then one person in the group has seen it and then you're like oh you gotta watch it you gotta watch it it's the best. I love it. <laughs> but actually, I, I don't like movies. Get the fuck out, then. <laughs> my recent announcement to be the podcast's new host. This is my audition tape. Woo! Yeah, all right. Stefano's the new host of Fresh Off The Real. Everybody give him a round of applause. He's in. I've actually never seen a movie in my life. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> Get out. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lib, what did you watch in January? So, I watched Avatar The Way of the Water. Because oh, that was 2023. It was 2023. Well, it came out in 2022, but I watched it in 2023. Oh, I see. Because you know, I was doing my uh, Oscars watch, and that got nominated for Best Picture somehow, and also didn't win anything. I don't. I don't think it won anything. I don't think so. Actually, hold on. I can't remember, but I was sorry. The way the water was fine, like. I don't, I don't really know why James Cameron wants to do more Avatar sequels. I mean, yeah, look, it made the first movie made a lot of money, but ask literally anybody, just go up to anybody who's seen Avatar and be like, hey, tell me one thing that happened in Avatar besides the, the weird hair sex scene. And no one's ever, <laughs> no ever going to answer. Uh, just an uh, update. Um, it, it was nominated for four Oscars and it won uh, Best VFX. Best via- okay, that makes sense. We're getting like a, a, a quadro of these movies. We're getting four, right? Or, or five. Five. And five. I don't like. I, I mean, I guess I know why I made money, but no. Stand corrected. Eight. Yeah. Oh, eight. 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 Oh my God, James! Are you sure you're not gonna die before you finish these movies? <laughs> He's in his midlife crisis. Leave him alone. <laughs> I, I I couldn't tell you anything about the first movie. I, I watched it, and that's all I can say. 
Uh, I didn't watch this one. It's the only Oscars. It's the only Best Picture nominee I didn't watch last year. I probably never will because uh, I can't and I don't care. <laughs> that's that's what it boils down to. I can't be bothered. Yeah, hmm. I mean, it, it's like it's a dumb movie. I don't know. Like it's it's, it, it's beautiful. It, it's it's very visually nice. Uh, if I would have seen it in theaters, maybe I would have liked it more. But it it's, it's it was just Avatar <laughs> again. Uh, war is bad. Military is bad. You know that that's all the movie really boils down to. Yeah, pretty much. In 2023, I started rewatching. I know Stefano's gonna uh, understand me on this one. I started rewatching all of the Top Gear specials, <laughs> and <laughs> there was one that I never saw before that I watched this year, and it was the Polar special. Not much to say. They kind of just like race to get to the north pole as fast as possible uh that was that's pretty much it good good special and then the the other thing i watched in january was uh pokemon detective pikachu which i'm pretty sure was for the podcast it was here yeah i also watched marcel the show with shoes on which was also for the podcast great movie we talked about it but it's it's great yeah and uh that's my january uh, my January is a lot shorter than I thought it was. I, I rewatched a lot of movies, so I'm not going to talk about those. I watched Strange World, Disney Strange World uh, this year. I want to read my review. Go for it. I think, Go it's, ahead. I think it's. I think it's. I think it's a funny insight on what I was feeling while watching this movie. Go ahead. I'm not going to do this often. Just, just this one's funny. It was fine. I reinstalled Fire Emblem Heroes. Try to pull Colgate Chan. <laughs> With whatever free arms I would get as login bonuses. I did not pull her. <laughs> Alright, this is supposed to be a movie review. I guess this is more about the movie than anything else, though. Oops. <laughs> so that's my review. So you were bored. <laughs> uh, it's fine. I, I don't know if you guys have seen it. Um, I didn't. No. It's fine. I, I don't think it's as bad as some people are, are making it out to be. Definitely wouldn't watch it again. But like, it's alright. It's enjoyable. I heard it was just boring. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of boring. I mean, I was pulling for gotcha characters, so yeah, it's pretty boring. <laughs> but uh, um, oh, that's fine. Since we're on the topic of Disney, I just I just want to like mention because because the last Disney movie I watched this year was it was Elemental, less Pixar, but I, I haven't seen like Wish. I haven't seen Strange World. Did they do another one? Did they do a third one? I forgot if they did. No, I think that was it. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I've, unless you count, because I'm I'm assuming we're gonna get to that at some point. The live action version of Little Mermaid. Uh, yeah, yeah, that too. We can count that too. Just I don't know. Any... Was that this year? That was this year. Yeah, or last mm. year, twenty twenty three. Yeah, you guys. When we when we talk when we talk about this year, even though we're in twenty twenty four now, we're probably talking about twenty twenty three. Just because. Yeah, we we really shouldn't confuse it. Like, we're <laughs> talking about twenty twenty three. Disney. Have you guys noticed that Disney's just like sh like not doing great <laughs> you know? oh, no, it was the haunted mansion that's the haunted mansion haunted uh, yeah. mansion yeah i didn't watch it but i just looked up the, the list disney's just straight up not making good movies lately like 2023 was such an off year for disney i think the the mentality of let's pump out nostalgia let's keep rebooting these movies let's like do sequels of these movies instead of creating something new there's two things that i want to mention i think the wheel is starting to rust yeah and we see it and i think a lot of audiences are kind of tired of the same sh schlock that they keep pulling out just for the sake of getting some pocket change but then when they do uh end up creating something original they, I think it's because they're so used to the formulaic uh, system of reboots and rebranding, whatever, that it transfers over to their original content and it suffers. I remember we had this conversation and I was defending it, like Disney. I was like, you know, they just had an off year, whatever. And part of me, I still kind of believe that's true. I think they just had an off year. But um, looking back now, um, the declining, because I'm not even including the Little Mermaid, because that's... That was about what we all expected in terms of quality. Yeah. But, you know, Strange World. Um, I, I, I thought Elemental was enjoyable, but that's Pixar. Yeah, I liked so. Elemental. For Elemental. The record, uh, I liked like, Elemental. Pixar is excluded in this conversation. But I also feel like like the buzz around these movies is a lot quieter, too. Like, I thought yeah. Elemental was good, but no one's talking about it. I feel like people talked about Soul and, and, and even um, Turning Red, like, for a lot longer. But, like, it feels like... Um, Elemental came out, and then uh, that's it. We moved on. We didn't talk about it any further. Elemental is, is a weird case, though, because it came out, it didn't do well at the box office, but everybody who has seen it loved it. 
Yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's a very movie. good movie. Did it get a theatrical like, release? It did. Yeah. It was a yeah. This it was in theaters. Not a lot of people went to go see it in theaters. I don't know why. Maybe it was just like a stroke of bad luck that they decided on the day that the movie released. Not a lot of people were going to cinemas at the time, and then that's why it failed at the box office. But anybody who has seen it on like Disney Plus or like secondhand sources or whatever, they they when they see when they saw it, there's good fucking ratings on this movie, and I, I genuinely think it's going to be nominated for best animated. Yeah, I think so too. Like I I I really liked Elemental. I thought it, I thought it had really good themes. The animation is beautiful. I, I I saw a lot of people saying that the animation was like boring. How like it, it it looks so good. They they were able to do like realistic fire and have it like move around like a person without rotoscoping. Like that that's it's that's impressive. It's really and that takes impressive. Years to do that. They literally had to create a new program so it looks good. That's what Pixar Pixar is famous for. When they do the modern CG shit with their current software, the software that everybody uses, at some point during the process, they want to go above and beyond, but the software can't handle it or just doesn't have the technology for it. So they'll create a new software for it to look like actual water, for it to look like actual fire, and to move like actual water and actual fire. Yeah, and, and people, they just don't understand like the effort that goes into this like and, and like i thought the story was good i resonated a bit with it it was very touching uh the love story is like yeah uh, uh, uh disney doing another love story it doesn't mean it's bad just because they do another love story they could they've done bad love stories before i think frozen is a example of that and like a while ago disney was like i think the reason why it felt that this year was like so like it like it hurt watching Disney movies this year was like a a, a couple of years ago Disney was a, a, on a decline again like they're like like what was happening right now like they made Frozen 2 and some other shit and then they made then they released Encanto and Encanto was great like I I love Encanto they they made Encanto it was really good Soul was really good I think it came out the year before right uh yeah it was during covid luca was really good and like they so it's like okay so now they're they they came back from their slump and now they're in another slump do you guys think the era of theatrical kids movies is kind of just kind of got killed off by oh streaming and tiktok and and, and, and stuff like that that is a good fucking question and i think the answer is yes i, th I think i think kids movies and like a, to some extent, kids TV shows just like doesn't really exist anymore. Like I may, maybe it's because I'm not a kid and I'm not looking for kids movies and kids shows. But like when I was a kid, I would go into theaters and I would see like a bunch of kids. Like, like I remember watching Hotel Transylvania in theaters. Or like uh, Shrek was aimed towards kids. At least Shrek one and two was. Shrek four kind of wasn't. Uh, and then you got like. All the Disney movies that were coming out, like Frozen One and Two, definitely really for kids. But Encanto, a kid can enjoy it. But there's a lot of complicated and there's a lot of like nuance in that movie that I think only an adult would understand. Same with Elemental. Like when I, when I say kids movie, I mean like family movies, because because I, I don't want to boil it down to uh, kids movies need to be stupid and and, and and treat them that way. I mean like like is the era of like kids going with their parents or whatever to the movie theater and watching these movies is, did that get killed off by stuff like tiktok and, and streaming and, and what have you yeah it probably got killed off by covid because like how how often do you see kids at a movie theater these days it's because of covid that launched all of these streaming programs disney plus hulu whatever and it was because of that because people weren't able to go to the theater Every company had to, had to make the executive decision like, all right, let's fucking, we need to make these movies. We need to make money somehow. So let's just do our own streaming server, Paramount Plus, HBO. But that was the release of the streaming era. Yeah. And then since, because you can't necessarily take that back when after COVID, right? Like you can't just yeah. like, all right, we're stopping the streaming program because now you're seeing a very good source of revenue and they're not just going to close it off. So because they kept it on, 
and they kept putting stuff on there, and especially exclusive stuff, people are losing a reason to go to the cinemas. So I think it's more streaming less than the actual COVID. Well, no, I, 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 I say COVID because uh, theaters shut down because of COVID. Okay, then like, yes. Like, reg regardless of, like, like fr uh, Frozen is an example. Uh, regardless of how you feel about Frozen, whether you think it's a good movie or, or not, it, is, is, like, it doesn't matter, you know? Um, but it was a cultural phenomenon, right? Yes. Um, I, I feel like we haven't had a Disney movie that's a, that was a cultural phenomenon since COVID. Yeah. What was the last one? I couldn't even tell you. I can't remember. But I, but I can't remember, like, a, 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 a family movie, you know, a Disney movie that took the world by storm the way, like, Frozen did. I feel like that's been long gone, even before COVID. If you can't remember before COVID, then there's a reason. No, I, I, I think, I think I'm with Stefano here. Like the last Disney movie that that made a huge impact is probably Frozen. It probably will be the last Disney movie to do that. Because if you talk to the people in our generation and you say, and you say, okay, what's Disney to you? What are they gonna say? They're obviously. Should I include Pixar or not include Pixar? In yeah, this? yeah, yeah, include Pixar. Okay, Finding Nemo, Wally, -E, Ratatouille, uh, Cinderella, Snow White, obviously all the princess movies, including Frozen, Tarzan. The, they haven't had a... name movies, but it's only movies in a very specific era. If you ask a kid what Disney is now, they'll probably give you like one or two movies, which is unfortunate. You ask a kid today and they'll probably be like, oh yeah, Disney, Encanto, Star Wars... Marvel, they'll say Marvel. Kids yeah, they'll say pro they'll probably say Marvel because I'm sure everybody and their grandmother knows that f the fucking companies they bought. I wonder if it's just like TikTok and stuff has kind of killed off the the buzz around these movies because like I I don't necessarily think it it's the problem that Disney kind of felt. I mean, like Strange World isn't a great movie. Mm. Um, Def it definitely like isn't like people didn't watch it for that reason. I think primarily because it wasn't good. But I do think that just that era of like kid like these these family movies kind of taking over like a, a kid, the kid generation we're just kind of past that because instead of going to the movies to watch or instead of spending two hours watching a movie um younger people are probably on their phones watching or something instead which which is not an inherently a bad thing but i feel like it, it's more just the culture change than than disney bad you know because because these so. movies still do well like you know but they just don't have that buzz anymore like the, yeah, the you're not gonna movie. get any memorable moments from Disney, but like I think Disney lost that magic, and then they're they're desperately trying to recreate it. Like you know, you know, you know, it's it's sad when because like Elemental is Pixar, but like like that that wasn't Disney by themselves. So, so like it it's sad that the best thing Disney put out in 2023 was Once Upon a Studio, and it, and it's 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 a nostalgia trip. That's all that yeah, is. Yeah, and also. it was one huge nostalgia trip. And you know what I liked? I liked Once Upon a Studio. I thought it was good. I thought it was way better than uh, those stupid Simpson shorts they keep doing. It was cute. It was nice. Yeah, I liked it. I, I liked it too. I liked it that they paid homage to their flops as well. Because people still remember, at least like us, in terms of our generation of Disney movies. People remember Atlantis. People that remember uh, Treasure Planet. Mm -hmm. And they were in it. They were recognized. They, I think, like pretty much every Disney property was referenced in that, in in that short, and like it, it was a it was a good short, but like it was only what ten minutes long, and, and that that's that was the best thing that Disney put out this year. People fucking still remember Hercules. This movie is like almost twenty years old. Yeah, come on, like like people today are still talking about how fucking good. Uh, Beauty and the Beast is that you cannot touch that movie like they've tried they they did the live action version it flopped they tried doing straight to DVD sequels straight to VHS sequels they flopped oh yeah they're during that era <laughs> yeah <laughs> god uh, I'm at least I'm happy we we got out of that era of Disney straight to video sequels I'm happy went we out straight it. to streaming yeah now it's straight <laughs> to <laughs> streaming <laughs> straight to Disney plus it's just that this year Disney was in a was i think they're in a huge slump right now and i really hope they come back with something good like is they 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 did say that well not not disney themselves but um who's the the bob bob, bob Iger, Iger, Iger is that his name bob Iger. yeah, yeah. bob Iger said that for 2024 he's going to 
they're gonna do qu more quality over quantity which should have been the rule from the get-go but whatever you, you 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 say that but like listen you can't argue with marvel numbers okay we get like four of those a year and aside from this year which we'll talk about i'm sure but like, like you have to remember that we got like four or five marvel movies a year and they all did stupidly well so uh, quantity give me my money over quality for a while anyway i think now we're kind of at a turning point where because these marvel movies aren't doing well anymore so i think they're gonna have to try to like start putting out genuine attempts again but i can't argue with mr ceo man who saw the dollar signs that we're giving him i kind of fall victim to the money the same ceo that during the two fucking strikes said hey babies you should shut up you don't know how our company is run you asshole <laughs> Yeah, not defending Bob Iger. the Bob Iger. He sucks. No, I'm I'm not saying you're defending him. It's my distrust in him. It's yeah. great. It's one thing to say something because it's another thing to actually do it. Like I like it just for the audience, not defending Bob Iger. But when you know, when you, you pump out shit and it sells, you'll keep pumping out shit. But now it's not selling anymore, right? Now it's not, but it, it was for a while. Yeah, it was yeah. before, but now it's not. That's why this this year was the the slump. This was the breaking <laughs> point, I think. So maybe we're gonna enter that next generation. You know, we're, yeah, we're gonna we're go back. Yeah. He's, they're gonna go back to formula, like the first formula. Back to formula. Back to formula. Well, that that's our that's our Disney talk. <laughs> that tangent went on a little longer than I, I would have liked, but anyway, um, to move on to, to more Disney, technically, <laughs> I, but I watched Java del Toro's Pinocchio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's awesome good. film, right? It's solid. It was good. Uh, I thought I I think I watched it in February. Yeah, I watched it in February, but uh, yeah, it was it was a. A really good movie. Uh, I really like the animation. They use puppets for that one. Really good. Yeah, you step loves it. He's he's the Pinocchio boy. You like you like Pinocchio Toon Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make a small comment. After this, I'll I'll move on. God, that was the year for Pinocchio. Oh really? During that <laughs> setup, we have a fucking we had two Pinocchio movies and one game. <laughs> That's yeah, well, yeah, Lies of P. Uh, if you got not a video game podcast, but if you guys have uh, not played Lies of P, you should go play Lies of P. I say that not playing Lies of P, but you should you should play it. <laughs> <laughs> and I have both played it, and it's fantastic. It's actually really good. We got a Pauly Shore Pinocchio movie as well. Oh my god, was that that was that twenty twenty three? I thought that was twenty two. No, no, that was no, no, that was twenty twenty three. But it was in the era of here's the list of Pinocchio content that was coming out. Here's a game. Here's a movie. Here's another movie. <laughs> and then we had the live action one, a part of the Disney slump. Four people had the same idea. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them was Disney themselves. <laughs> so, hey, uh, Steph, on. what about you? What's your January look like? I saw Megan. Oh, yeah, that. I don't, I oh, don't like Megan. I think Megan kind of stinks. And they're making a second one. And there's plot holes and plot points in the film that really seem hypocritical to the, to the characters but it's also a horror movie but yeah didn't like it i thought it was meh i haven't seen it but i saw online everyone's fucking freaking out about it but i don't see the, i don't see the it's, it's chucky yes it's a to me it's a worse chucky the movement of the doll is not creepy the doll herself is not scary mind you chucky isn't either but like it's a slasher yeah. film so like bleh, whatever i was gonna say i don't think chucky's <laughs> That's scary. Because well, Megan's supposed to be, correct me if I'm wrong, because I haven't seen it, but she's supposed to be a robot, right? She's an AI. It's yeah. a robot AI companion. Like for kids, it's like, you know, the, it's supposed to, it's main message is like putting, is the equivalent of putting kids in front of screens, right? Hey, you're annoying me. Here's a tablet. Watch whatever. Leave me alone. This is, this is the main message that it's talking about. Instead of using a screen, here's an, a doll that could replicate human speech, human behavior and cognitive thought and can learn from you as it goes on ah uh, yeah okay yeah so it, that's the message that they're putting out and they achieved it but eh, i don't know I, I it just wasn't entertaining to me but on brighter news here's a movie i think we all want we all watched uh by tom hanks it's a man called otto i didn't watch it yeah i did not watch that <laughs> you didn't i thought you said you guys wanted to watch that yeah i wanted to we did say we wanted to watch it <laughs> Okay, very wholesome movie. If you've seen Up, it's very similar. <laughs> oh, I don't like Up. <laughs> well, no, no, I'm kidding. Oh, okay. um, it, it, it's, yeah, it's this old man. Should I even say a synopsis if you guys are going to watch it? 
I, I'm Asian gonna watch pass it. it. Oh, I'm definitely gonna watch it. So like, just uh, it's a really, it's actually a really good movie. What's uh, out of five? Out of five? Out of five? Yeah. Four. Hmm. Okay. I cried at the. I cried at this movie. This movie touches upon like really hard hitting subjects. Tom Hanks's performance and the. Um, I forgot the lady, but the female lead in this fantastic fucking actors and actresses banger moving on <laughs> I, after a beautiful day in the neighborhood i just can't look at tom hanks without crying anymore <laughs> oh, he's so tom hanks will make you cry <laughs> that should be the tagline of his next movie except for elvis <laughs> except no, I, cried, I cried for different reasons i can't dance i can't sing the Wait. final movie that i saw in january was uh it was something cronenberg what was the thing called again? What was the act? The Cronenberg, like like a Brandon Cronenberg, Rick and Morty. <laughs> no, this is Brandon Cronenberg's Infinity Pool. Oh, Infinity Pool. Sorry, I'm just really quickly looking up the cast. Mia Goth is in this, and man, did she have a very good fucking career? Because she's one of the best actresses in this film. She's I've seen her in um, X. There was oh, what was it called? Pearl. These three movies is what I would recommend you watch if you're a Mia Goth fan. Uh, aside from that, that's pretty much my entire January. You know, January is always a slow year. Not a lot comes out in January. That's uh, slow year, slow month. <laughs> Not a lot comes out in January usually, but the la last year, like, look, 2023, like, as much as we just dogged on it, <laughs> like, like, 10 minutes ago... There was some good shit this year. Like, not just for movies, but for, for video games. There was some good schlock this year. There was some good fucking shit, man. <laughs> Again, not a video game podcast, but like... The Game Awards did not do justice about how many good fucking games came out this year. Like, if you're a gamer, you ate. You ate well this year. <laughs> and, um... For movies, you, you also ate quite well this year unfortunately a lot of the stuff you wanted to eat got delayed <laughs> but hey that's film that's film dune 2 that's film <laughs> when, when, um, i'm not gonna be talking about the strikes but the strikes no. did happen yeah it's resolved moving on to february lib what'd you watch in february me me okay let's see uh what are, what did i watch in february so if you remember uh, uh, last year, uh, uh, 2023's Oscars episode that we did, I uh, I really dogged on Elvis, and I mentioned that I didn't finish it. Well, in February, I finally went back and actually finished it, and it's just as bad as I th said it was. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> if not worse, uh, I I hate this movie. I I. I I don't see any good in this movie. I gave it one star. I, I, I straight up don't see any good in this movie besides Austin Butler's performance. But that wasn't good enough to make it a good movie. But Austin Butler's performance was straight up art. Like, it was beautiful. Really good. I watched uh, The Banshees of Inisherin, uh, which has become one of my favorite movies. I, I, I loved it. It was really, uh, it was funny. It was sad. It was dramatic. And there were a lot of fingers. <laughs> he used to be nice. Now what I see, not nice. <laughs> not nice. Not nice. Not nice. It's it's great, and like I could probably like rewatch it a million times. Like it's 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 really really good. If you guys haven't seen it, I mean, didn't win any Oscars, but uh, it should have. Uh, I also I, then I watched uh, Empire of Light. Uh, it, you're gonna notice a lot of this is Oscar watch. <laughs> Empire of Light. It was not bad. It was it was okay. Elizabeth Olsen was pretty. Not not Elizabeth. What the fuck did I just say? <laughs> Elizabeth Olsen. Am I am I am I freaking out right now? Is this something in this mug root beer? Olivia Coleman, not Elizabeth Olsen. And then I watched the Sea Beast. Uh again, another Oscar movie. It was pretty good. Um actually like I want to talk a little bit about the Sea Beast actually. Very briefly, because I did mention it. I'm sure I mentioned it last Oscars uh episode. The animation was really generic and you know it was like it was like a safe movie for Netflix to make. But honestly, I have always wanted a sea of thieves movie and the sea beast is basically that it's sea of thieves and like it's the closest i'll ever get and that's why i like the sea beast <laughs> have you guys seen it i, I have seen it. We watched it together oh it's true we did yeah yeah i actually haven't seen it i i would recommend it like if you like yeah i know you like um sea of thieves it's basically a sea of thieves movie I, I've been wanting to take a look at it, but I've always been keeping it in the back burner. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. Uh, and then I watched uh, uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. We did a entire bonus episode about it. 
Uh, so I will not talk about this movie, and we're not gonna get into the tangents of Marvel this year. It was terrible. One of the worst Marvel movies, I think. And like, like Marvel this year, what the fuck did you do? Just saying, Marvel this year, actually, what the fuck? That that's all I have to say. What the fuck? Do better. That's that, but that's pretty much it. The only good thing Marvel put out this year, in my opinion, was a uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, which I watched in May. But uh, I'll just mention it here. I'll give it four stars. It was good. What are your, what are your thoughts on Guardians of the Galaxy stuff? And good movie. I did. This is the only Marvel movie that has made me cry. And my God, did James Gunn pull all the stops for that movie? Yeah, he did. He he straight up like he was like, I might be leaving you guys for literally your rival. But let me make a really good movie for you. One last favor from me. And then he moved on to uh, quote-unquote fix DC. We still haven't seen an example of that yet. <laughs> Listen, I want to I wanna make a statement now because I'm assuming everybody has seen this movie by now. Otters are the cutest fucking creatures on the planet. You know what they do when they're small? They hold their mother's hand so they can float. As they're trying to learn how to swim, you can't fucking do what James Gunn did. <laughs> you sons of bitches! I'm coming for you. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. I my only comments on Guardians of the Galaxy because I I, we did, I watched it later in the year, but might as well get it out of the way now. It's the last good Marvel movie ever. Yeah, it could be. It could very well be. Yeah, that's it. It's that's the last it. one. If, if it is, I would not be surprised, to be honest. Like, if it is, I would not be surprised. All I watched this month was Ant-Man and the Lost Quantumania. There's a podcast episode where I talk about it at length. It sucks. Uh, I think it killed Marvel. <laughs> that's, that's where we're leaving that. Yeah. I think Marvel is very much regretting their involvement with a certain actor. We will not be talking about that on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the, I watched Sea Beast. Thought it was boring. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's my take, and uh, that's all I watched. I thought it was boring. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? That's because you have never played Sea of Thieves. I bought Sea of Thieves because you guys told me we would play together, and we did. I, I, <laughs> all the, I, okay. This is a can of worms. <laughs> this is a can of worms because I didn't tell him to buy it. All I did was tell him that Sea of Thieves was on sale. That is all I said. He bought it. He didn't tell me to buy it. You said we would play together. I, I didn't say that! <laughs> I said if you want to play Sea of Thieves, I have it and it's on sale. That's all I said. <laughs> that sounds like an invitation to me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what I watched in February, if you kids would stop bickering. <laughs> Um, I watched M. Night Shyamalan's Knock at the Cabin. It's about the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Another case of M. Night Shyamalan thinking he's a master class at cinematography. <laughs> Alright, honestly, it's a fine movie. Solid. It's not his worst work, it's not his best work either. It's solid. And finally, this is the one I'm excited. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. It's released <laughs> on February. <laughs> I, need, I need you to wait a little bit before you talk about that, okay? I need you to wait a bit. Are you wait? Okay, I'll yeah, wait, I'll wait. But aside from that, that was my entire February. Uh, a, a slower month than January, it seems. Mm -hmm. Yep. March is where things start getting a little interesting for my uh, diary. I watch The Sauce. <laughs> what the fuck is The Sauce? Do you guys know what The Sauce is? No. Oh. So The Sauce is a very short, short film that was made for a, um, that was made for a film contest. Uh, and for the film contest, you had to make a short film and you needed to include the line, bitch, you the sauce. Uh, and the way these guys did it was, you know, I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to spoil it. You know what? I'm not going to spoil it. It's only like five minutes. If you guys haven't seen it, go on YouTube, search the sauce. It's really funny. <laughs> and I gave it five stars. <laughs> um, so that was the first thing I watched in March. You guys have seriously never heard of it? <laughs> You don't? Can't say it have no. All right, yeah, we're gonna watch it later. We're gonna watch it together. <laughs> uh, after the after we're done recording, we're gonna watch it. <laughs> I watched. Uh, we watched Creed three. Uh, we watched it in VIP. That was really great. Uh, we did a whole episode on it. And also, twenty twenty three is when we finished our Rocky, uh, our Rocky marathon, which we also have an episode on. All right, the 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 movie I watched after that. Uh, I watched Triangle Sadness for the. For the Oscars. And then now uh, I watch Superbad for the podcast. Tar for the Oscars. RRR for the Oscars. Great movie. Love RRR. You, everybody should watch that movie. That movie's fan-fucking-tastic. 
Fablemans for the Oscars, and that was it. Again, big Oscars, big Oscars time. <laughs> uh, all those movies were good, uh, except for like, uh, Triangle Sadness was like, it was good, but like, that movie gross. Uh, yeah, a little bit. I guess it's my turn. No. No, no, I'm gonna make Stefano go. I'm okay, gonna skip well. you, Pat. <laughs> So, you go, Steph. Go ahead. So what I watched in March, um, I watched Shazam. <laughs> Which one? That the Fury of the Gods. Okay. Oh yeah, that exists. Me. This was before yeah. James Gunn uh, was appointed CEO. Question mark. I'm sure that's his creative position. director. No, he's not CEO. He's he's um Kevin Feige for DC now. Yeah, whatever Kevin Feige's position, like executive producer or something. I think, I think it's creative director. I think it's what creative it director. Okay. Uh, ich. That's it. Just ich. Ich. Yeah. Uh, fun fact: the next Snow White is in this movie, and she's mid. <laughs> which which actress is this? Um, she what? It, it, well, her character in Fury of the God in Fury of the Gods. Oh, actually, I remember her name. It's Rachel Zegler. Oh, yeah. I think she's a good actress. Yeah. I mean, in Shazam, it was mid. <laughs> mm. it was mid. Yeah, yeah. I watched Bull Br I mean, Willem Dafoe's Inside. Very different film. It's about an art thief that gets trapped in a home from home security. That sounds interesting. I kind of want to see And then watches mind fucking unfold from there. That's that's what Inside is. That's what Willem Dafoe's Inside is. And it's a good watch. It's a pretty solid watch. Willem Dafoe, great actor. And then travel all the way to March 24th, myself and my dear old papa decided to go watch John Wick Chapter 4. Really good movie. I still haven't seen it. I, every time people talk about John Wick, I, I, I keep reminding myself, oh yeah, I have to watch those movies. And then I never fucking do. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so if that's the case, if Lib wants to watch these movies, I'm not going to talk about too much. Great film. Also shed a tear to my eye did it make me cry but I, I i i got choked choked up a little bit um yes that was john wick chapter four and i watched murder mystery 2 adam sandler's murder mystery 2 i watched that too not this month but later it's 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 my same comment as shazam fear of the gods it's mid but then we took a little bit of a high ground uh and i watched a, a horror movie called malum interesting a very creative horror film for somebody having a psychological breakdown, it's this police officer who's now in charge of a precinct that's been haunted by, I, w I don't want to say spirits, but it's this demon that was summoned by a cult. A cult who just so happened to be police officers at that precinct. Uh, and it's consistently tormenting her. Really good watch if you're a horror movie fan. Honestly, good scares, good atmosphere, good music. And hell, good, good fucking monster. I, I applaud the the prop and uh, the makeup team, prop, makeup, and costume team for creating this beast. It's very well put together. Then we make a little bit of a dip again, and we watch D and D, the among, <laughs> was it Honor Among Thieves? Thought it was meh. I uh, I still haven't seen it. I I keep like again. It's another thing where I keep saying, oh yeah, I have to see that. I, I play D and D a lot. Uh, I, I I used to DM a lot. When I heard there was a movie, I was like, "Oh, that's awesome!" And then I never saw it. One day I will watch it. Chris Pine is an okay actor. <laughs> Chris Pine is an okay actor. I'm. It doesn't look like a D and D movie to me. It looks like just another fantasy movie. Well, that's what D and D is. Yeah, I, I I knew that's what you were about to say, and that's fair. That's an absolutely fair comment. I watched this with uh, our good friend Thomas. You, you saw him on the, the, the Rage Room video that we posted. Um, I watched it with him, and we were discussing about it. And, like, I just, I didn't like the writing. Nobody has an arc in this film, except for the except for the, the kid who was in Detective Pikachu. He's the only, he, Chris Pine, are the only two people that have an arc in this film. And there's, like, they're, like, a team of, like, six Add, and like, I don't know, like, to make it more, seem more like a D&D &D film and less like any fantasy film ever. Because like, you're labeling this as D&D. &D. Like, it's D&D. &D, so like, I don't know, I was discussing this with Thomas, I was proposing the idea, like, I don't know, maybe in like, very crucial moments of the fight scenes or like, some of the scenes where they have to make a decision or they have to persuade somebody or like, just anything. Uh, there's like a shot of Chris Pine on the floor and like, there's enough room in there to like, CG like a number two or like a three. So we as the audience know like, oh, okay, we know what's about to transpire. It's 
think he's gonna fail because he got a shit roll. I don't know, maybe something like that. I maybe that's too on the nose. But I don't know, something to make it feel like D and D instead of Lord of the Rings. Yeah, uh, if if you guys want to watch something like based on D and D that's actually really good, uh, there's an Amazon Prime show called called The Legend of Vox Machina. It's based on a critical role campaign. It's really good. It's a it, animation's really good. The the story's really good. It's is and it's it's just good. Matthew Mercer's in it. You can't go wrong with Matthew Mercer. He's Ganondorf. <laughs> yeah, Ganondorf. That's Ganondorf. God, Zelda <laughs> came out this year. That's what happened. This that's the only thing that happened. Uh, but as we traverse our way to April, Lib, what the fuck did you do? We skipped Pat. <laughs> Oh, we skipped you. Pat. We yeah. actually, I forgot that Pat did go. Pat, what you did you do for March? <laughs> what did you do for March? I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skim through a lot of these because there were Oscars watches. This was my Oscars month. For the most part, there's one movie I want to talk about at length. But otherwise, they're all Oscars watches. Once so I watched Creed Three, All Quiet on the Western Front. Matches of Inisherin, Woman Talking, Triangle of Sadness, The Whale, Tar, The Fate Woman's, all for the Oscars and or the podcast. I watched John Wick Chapter 2 for the first time, because I was going to watch Chapter 4. I have not seen it yet, but I've seen 2 and 3. The, my first movie for, for March is, is uh, not for March, for April, was is Chapter 3. I'm just putting that in there now. And then I watched the movie. I watched Every Whippy Kid. That's, that's also for the first time. Oh, yeah. There's one movie I watched that Steph mentioned earlier that I told him to wait to talk about because I knew this was coming. <laughs> I watched Read the Blue Button Honey. Let's go! <laughs> this movie started an unfortunate trend with public domain IPs. Um, <laughs> and uh, the director of this movie said he's building a public domain horror cinematic universe. Mm-hmm. And the thought of that happening terrifies me. Not because this movie was scary because it's not. It's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> It's it's, a, it's another schlocky, classic, nothing, not at all original slasher film. That's what this is. That's it. With no dialogue from the killer at all until the end of the movie. Because uh, Jim movie, Cummings' voice is copyright. Yeah. This movie does nothing interesting at all with the fact that this is public domain now. And I get it. It's it's funny to have this childhood, this childhood character. You know, we all... Have, I think a lot of people, especially my generation, have like history with Winnie the Pooh. Maybe not everybody, but mm -hmm. Winnie the Pooh is a very beloved childhood character. Mm -hmm. So it's funny to think that he's a he's a killer, right? Yeah. But man, is that such a boring take to do with these characters? <laughs> it, it is, and, and all these movies do nothing interesting at all. With this being a horror movie, here's Winnie the Pooh. Oh, he's a killer. He's upset at Christopher Robin, and, that's, and, and that's that's the thing I'm look, I'm kind of afraid of. That with Mickey Mouse because I think um, Steamo Willie has a lot of rich potential to tell interesting stories now that it's public domain and instead they're gonna make a schlop like this horror movie in fact we already have two there's two you of guys, them you, you have no you don't understand audience at home when Pat and I first saw the news that like it's official Steamo Willie is going public domain he made a joke to me like you know what you have to do because we were just like we were shitting on Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey and because I'm a cinema guy, it's my turn to make a Steamboat Willie cartoon. Because, you know, the Toon Man. Toon Boy. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the Toon Boy, so I create the, the, the tunes. Uh, and after that, not like a day later, here's two horror movies based off Steamboat Willie and a game. And like apparently, because uh, there's been rumors of there being a Bendy and the Ink Machine movie. Yes. Now they should just straight up do it. They should do it right now. That would, that would be that's it's gold. It's they they they've hit a gold mine right now. Oh yeah, because now Bendy and Ink Machine has created a sort of a community now, uh, to a point where like they have the funds to make a movie, and it's great. There was the creator that launched a video. He cre sent out April Fool's video years ago on a Bendy and Ink, Ink Machine movie, and it was something that he really wanted to do. And he's like, "Oh, April Fools, ha ha, funny." And a little bit after that. Just like a year or two later, that's when he was approached. <laughs> hey, you want to make a movie? And he's like, uh, sure. Yeah, fuck it. And this is where, because I want to jump on to what Pat said about like, there's there could be a creative liberty or there's a lot of potential with a Steamboat Willie, with Steamboat Willie, period. Just saying in terms of creative, like creativeness. Um, Benny Ink in the Ink Machine is not necessarily far from that era of cartoons. And if Benny and Ink Machine does better 
which it most likely will, than the fucking Steamo Willy Horror movie. God. <laughs> We're all fucked. <laughs> I guess I guess that's it for Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. <laughs> We're gonna see a second one of that. There's a sequel. I want nothing more than to forget this movie ever happened. Too bad you're gonna get a second one. Well, it's too bad, man, because uh, the 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 creator of that movie really wants to keep going. <laughs> you know He's what? Good make for a, him. A Peter Pan, a Peter Pan horror movie. He's very dead set on that. He's gonna do a fucking Bambi horror movie. Uh, this is real. I I shit you not. This is real. Yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, uh, IPs went public domain. I guess uh, 1923 was a big year, <laughs> or 1924. <laughs> um, well, yeah. So uh, moving on uh, to April. Uh, April is uh, slow for me. Like this is where it starts slowing down because I had just come off of the Oscars watch and I was really burnt out from watching all those movies. You're gonna see that in my diary that I pretty much only watched like two or three movies a month at this point. <laughs> so in April, I watched. Well, we all watched the Super Mario Bros. movie. Uh, an another VIP watch. Uh, I believe we did an episode on it. Uh, so if you want our opinion, you could check out the episode. But Steph, you weren't in that episode. What's your opinion on the Mario movie? The writing was weak. The animation is the star of the show. Uh, the voice actors did pretty good jobs. Some more than others. But still pretty good jobs. They have a hard time writing characters and writing arcs. Uh, music was all pretty much remixed music. Credit your... Credit the fucking Donkey Kong rap artist, Grant Kirkhope. Credit them. I don't understand why they didn't. Short and sweet sort of story. They're going to make a second one. Uh, we're going to be in the VIP seats when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> we got a Yoshi teaser at the end. I thought it was okay. Like, well, like this is an alright movie. Now, there's another topic to bring up here from the, the Mario movies. Uh, we, there was confirmed a Zelda movie in the works. We don't know. It's rumored that... Uh, Sony Pictures is doing it, but that I don't think that's been 100% uh, confirmed yet. Uh, but it is going to be live action, and Miyamoto is apparently like overseeing the entire project. Now, he did say that for the Mario movie, and it turned out to be uh, you know, not what we were really expecting. But uh, I, have, uh, I have high hopes for a Zelda movie. It could work in live action. You know, like I, I, we talked about the potential of a Zelda movie a while ago, and um, if it was like in the style, like if it's live action, I'd want it to be something like in the style of The Witcher. You know, not really like Lord of the Rings, more like The Witcher. But um, that's just I see me. Them, like coming together, like a mix of both. Yeah, I will say though, I never wanted a Zelda movie. I wanted a Zelda TV show because I think TV a TV show format would work way better for Legend of Zelda. But um, and I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic. You know, the Mario movie wasn't that bad. And so it's either going to be better or just as good. I don't think it's going to be worse. We're going to get an announcement saying that it's directed, it's it's published by Illumination. They're like, what the fuck? <laughs> you guys do live action now? <laughs> you guys do live action? What, what, what's this? They're so scared. So scared of working with other companies that they just stick to <laughs> I think I think it's really funny. If they do go with Sony, I think that's really funny. Andrew Garfield as Link. Emma Stone as Zelda. Yeah. <laughs> he's gonna put his earbuds on. He's gonna listen to Philip Phillips. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I just think it, it's, it's really funny. Like, because Sony would be working with Nintendo, right? <laughs> like, 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 PlayStation working with Nintendo. You know, because, you know, the, like they were supposed to work together back in the day and then they made they separated sony made the whatever you everybody knows the story <laughs> not a video game podcast uh but yeah so uh watched the mario movie and then uh we watched uh, sorry to bother you uh but that was for the podcast and those were the only two movies i watched in april the, the other ones were rewatches but we're skipping rewatches so those are the only two movies i watched in april yeah this is gonna be a trend for me i'm just gonna sit back and let pat talk <laughs> <laughs> Um, for my April watches, like I said earlier, I watched Shaw Chapter 3 to prepare for Chapter 4. I didn't watch that yet. I watched Mario podcast movie. I watched Murder Mystery 2, which Steph talked about earlier. I'm a casual enjoyer of an Adam Sandler schlock fest. But this <laughs> one was kind of bad. I gave it 2 out of 5. I watched Shazam Fury of the Gods. Another 2 out of 5. But this movie sucks. <laughs> this mm -hmm. lightly. It's real bad. And I watched um, a, a, little, a little flick called a Lego Monkey Kid. A hero is born. What? Lego Journey to the West, kind of, but set in the modern day. 
And uh, it was very good. I enjoyed it quite a bit. The animation was uh, pretty pretty great, honestly. Um, same animators who did uh, Rise of the Team and T. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Same same studio. Um, I watched this because uh, I'm a Dragon Ball fan. You know, Dragon Ball is <laughs> inspired by Journey to the West. This is also inspired by Journey to the West. And also, uh, Goku is Goku's voice actor. Sean Shamo plays um, Sun Wukong in that sp- in that movie. So it was it was cool. Um, I watched it. It was, it was fun. Um, I'd recommend it, especially if you like Lego things. It's got very Lego humor. Yeah, it's it's, it's a good time. That's the last movie I watched in April. I love Lego stuff. I've never heard of this. Well, if you love Lego Ninjago, I'm, I'm you'll I bet you'll love the you'll love that. Yeah, show. if you like Lego Ninjago, you'll like Lego Monkey Kid. Yeah, I like Lego Ninjago. It just has a has a funny title, Monkey Kid. That's really funny. It's, I guess instead of Monkey King, I guess. It, it is very anime. Yeah, well, monkeys spelled. M O N K I E. So <laughs> I wouldn't say an- I'd say anime inspired. It's still a cartoon. Yeah, like it's yeah. still you see you see some of that traditional Western style cartoons. But that's the reason why I fucking love that studio. It's because they combine the two, and it's fucking amazing. All right, I watched uh, Russell Crowe as a pope Ooh, yeah. in The Pope's Exorcist. <laughs> uh, it's about Russell Crowe exercising a little kid that's it interesting it's 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 an all right it's an all right movie if you if you love the exorcist russell crowe is like um the john wick of exorcists um that's intriguing <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like similar to that like that sort of badass confident like i can exercise anything and it, it, the movie knows it's a little silly but anyways moving on i watch paint it's which is just owen wilson as Bob Ross. Oh yeah, that's that's in my that's in my um in my watch list, but I never I never watched it. Was it good? It's all right. I give it a three. The, like that's that's literally the only like the best description I can make of this film. It's <laughs> almost in as Bob Ross. Uh, then after the Mario movie, jump a little bit more ahead of time. Uh, to April fourteenth, I decided to go with a friend of mine, Michel, to go watch Renfield, a Nicolas Cage vampire movie. Oh, how was that? The time I watched those. Okay. A lot of okays here. <laughs> yeah, I like the action was the star of the show. I loved to me, I loved seeing the effects. I love seeing the powers. I love seeing the kills. And it's amazing. The dialogue is awful. <laughs> the writing is meh. But it tells a good little story about toxic workplace environments. And it and like it's not like it, it's like shrouded around like because uh, Nicholas Holt, who is a star of the show, who's Renfield, is uh, Nicholas Cage's or Dracula, uh, Dracula's assistant. I think you mean Dracula. Dracula's assistant. Dracula. Dracula. And they straight up in the film say this is a workplace. This is this is a toxic workplace environment. And it, it's just Nicholas Holt going to an AA meeting <laughs> for toxic workplace environment. And I thought that was a funny concept. That's like, it's so funny. For Dracula's assistant to do that, that's amazing. And it's funny, it got a few chuckles out of me. Moving right along. Okay, I did not watch this, but I really need to watch this. I need to watch Suzume. By the way, two anime movies this year that really should be nominated, right? <laughs> What's the second one? Oh, Boy in the Heron? The Academy respects Ghibli, not, not any other studio. Fair enough. Only Ghibli, <laughs> apparently. I, your, I, your name. Suzume, Suzume is really fucking good though. <laughs> Suzume is the same studio that did uh, your name. And stuff, so I'm sure it's I'm sure it's fantastic. Uh, then we take a little bit of a dip on April 21st where I watch Ghosted with um, Chris Evans and Ana de Armas. Uh, yeah. yeah. Eh. Eh. And that's how I feel too. Afterwards, directly after that, I watch Evil Dead Rise. How was it? It's on my list. Fucking good film. Good. Is that the one that I'm thinking of, right? It's... Rise is the new one. Listen yep. The... Really good film. A nice little wonderful. I love the, the the makeup. I love the effects. I love just the huge amount of blood. Which, by the way, this fucking movie was holding for a very long time. I see you, Mark Fishbach. I know you conquered that record. <laughs> <laughs> Our asses will be in the seats for Iron Lung. Okay, Mark? Really nice reintroduction to the Evil Dead series. It doesn't play on, like past stuff it has the exact same book from the first one but it tells a completely unique story and man in terms of cinematography just the opening alone the opening alone deserves an award i'm a i'm a big fan of evil dead like the franchise yeah but the reboot 
is kind of awful. So when they announced the sequel to the reboot, I was a little worried. I heard it's great. Is that what Evil Dead Rises? It's, it's a sequel to the reboot, yeah. I thought it was its own thing. It's a sequel to The Evil Dead. I don't know if it's a direct sequel, but it is the same universe as the reboot. Oh, okay. Then I stand wildly corrected. I thought it was its own thing. Like, it's a reintroduction now. But it's really good. Uh, moving right along. After this movie, I went to watch Sisu. Which, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, because I remember seeing the trailer for this film when I went to go watch John Wick 4. I don't know if it's either inspired or created by some of the people who worked on John Wick 4. Because this is very similar to a John Wick story about an ex-soldier who the Nazis went to go bother him. He is a miner, uh, which means he mines gold, comments. <laughs> <laughs> he has this trusty pickaxe in hand his little doggo, and he's going in the lakes and he's finding gold. He finds gold, and as he's transporting it, Nazis decide to, to appear <laughs> and bother him. So they took his gold and killed his donkey. The dog, I think, was left alive. I think the dog was left alive. So he goes on a vengeful path to get his gold back. Does he get his gold back? I don't know. Go watch the movie. It's pretty solid. The kills are actually really good. Uh, this is a movie that Pat and I watched together. It was Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. Uh, Pat and I watched it. Pat doesn't want to have kids after this movie. <laughs> I didn't say that. I did not say that. I did not say that. I want to have kids. Uh, I just... So I reiterate already, what you said. I am not currently ready to have children. <laughs> <laughs> I am 27 years old. At this moment, at this stage of my life, I am not ready to have children. But I very much still want to have children. <laughs> Just emotionally, um, I am not ready to be a parent. Yeah, this was a, a movie that was adapted by a book. Uh, apparently a really popular book. I, Nat approached us and she said that, like, oh, I've read the book when I was younger. Like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, and finally, I end off my April watching another horror movie from Hulu called Clock. Cock? Which is about cock. <laughs> Clock. It's this horror film where it's another like sort of psychological horror, but there is a monster in this film where she gets injected with, I believe, some sort of virus that brings up all her family issues. And the monster that's following her around is her grandma. And her grandma's kind of a shitty person. So go watch the movie. It tells a lot. It's a really good story. And I think the cinematography, the monster, the horror aspects are really nice to watch and it gives that sort of eerie feeling that's the way i would describe this movie it's very eerie eerie and creepy but that's clock. clock and that's all for my uh, that's that's cock <laughs> and that's all for my april and as we move into may may is bleak may may is may is very bleak for me that's when i watched my least favorite thing i've ever seen in my life <laughs> yeah same yeah so uh well in May, uh, we mentioned before that we watched Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, so we're not going to talk about that. And we also, I also uh, watched the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special right before watching Guardians of the Galaxy. It's, it's okay. It's cute. They go back to Earth. That's about it. So then, uh, on May 29th, our, our, uh, our buddy, our pal, that, uh, that, uh, Stefano knows really well is... <laughs> We call him Slight. So he, he, uh, he, Slight showed up in our Discord one day and was like, man, I just got done watching the worst fucking movie I've ever seen. He is a huge movie guy and, and he's, he is an actor. So we're like, okay, if he says this movie is terrible, we have to watch it. The movie he was talking about was music directed by Sia, the, the singer. The chandelier you know that song she made that movie 2021 it is the worst movie i have ever seen in my life <laughs> pat was in the discord too we watched it together uh steph was not there but um uh yeah we watched it with slight steph you weren't there but uh i wish you were because I, I want i wanted i want you to see this i have curiosities with this movie because i was told from my brother and these two and to other people of how god awful this movie is. It is actually and terrible. it's it's slowly, slowly like rising up again. Now that you've brought it up again, that like ah, I kind of I, I kind of want to see it. It's like watching a car wreck, right? Yeah. You can't drive by the fucking metropolitan, and then you see a car wreck and then drive past it, right? You gotta like slowly 
What's going on? Yeah, like, like, oh man, what <laughs> happened here? Oh, I hope everyone's okay. Like, I don't, I don't rate a lot of movies half a star. It's very rare that I rate a movie half a star, because uh, that's you know that's a one out of ten. It's very rare I rate a movie one out of ten. Uh, music is the easiest one out of ten I've ever given. I also watched music. It's the only new movie I watched this month. There is one movie I think that exists ever that I think is worse than music. So this is the second worst movie I have ever seen in my life. And I am confident in saying that. This movie is quite literally dog shit. <laughs> it is poop. <laughs> it's poop scoop. It is poop. That's all I want to say about it. Because it, it is such an insult to my eyes and ears. <laughs> well, when someone tells me this is the worst movie I've ever seen, that like excites me a little bit. Because, you know, it's a challenge. I lost that battle. <laughs> I should not have accepted that challenge. And there will not be anything worse than I think. I think that's it. I th that's, that's the worst. There's only one movie I think is worse, and that's not a big budget Hollywood movie. So, like, maybe it's not fair, but music is... is if, we're, if I can't include the other movie that I, I can't talk about right now, music is the worst movie I've ever seen. It, it, it does everything wrong and I'm, I, yeah that's it i guess we're gonna leave it on that ominous note <laughs> it does everything wrong and that's all i watched in you in may aside from guardians 3 which i said earlier was good and and and, and moving on stuff what did you watch in, in may <laughs> i'm sure i think pat has seen this movie but it was like much later uh, i watched blackberry and i have to say i can't see glenn howerton playing any other character that doesn't resemble his character from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. There's one scene where he's in front of, like, a board of directors for, like, the NHL, and, like, as he talks, as he, like, he's yelling at them, all I'm picturing is Dennis. Glenn Howerton, he's actually my pick for, um, uh, Mr. Fantastic. Well, it's too bad it's Pedro Pascal. Yeah, too bad. <laughs> Which, like, I love Pedro, I think he's great, I love him, he's a sweet little man. Would love to have a beer with him. Terrible fucking casting for Mr. Fantastic. Yeah. Just awful casting. <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> whatever. But that's pretty much it for me and May. One movie. Well, two, technically, but, yeah. Me too, but one of them was music, so fuck you. <laughs> you chose to watch that. You didn't have to. <laughs> I know I didn't have to. It's, it's okay, because the first movie in June... Softens the blow a little bit. My first yeah. movie. All right, Lib, go ahead. Introduce the first movie we watched in June. All right, guys. Well, <laughs> the first movie we watched in June. I, uh, you know what? I can't. I gotta tell you, Steph. I, I straight up don't remember. Uh, because the movie, the movie we watched in June was so bad. I just, I, I, I don't remember it. I'm sorry. It's just a bad movie, so I don't remember it. Oh, c come on. You're the only- I, I'm the one who forgets things. I don't know- I don't know what the first no, movie- No, no, I'm sure- and Pat agrees with me, right? You agree with me. The first movie we watched in June was terrible, right? You, you agree I, 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 I- joking aside, I do have one really big complaint about this movie. I talk about it on the podcast. But the movie we're talking about is Spider-Man uh, Across the Spider-Verse. Yeah, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. So, the first movie we watched in June was Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And we did- do an episode on it but we did it like right after we saw it so it was still fresh in our brains now we had some time to think about the movie and for me some stuff has changed yeah same my opinion has definitely changed a little bit i still think the movie's great don't get me wrong i still think it's a, a great addition to this trilogy it is a huge step down from the first one and i, I have one major glaring issue with the story which this isn't this isn't the place to to express those feelings. Mm -hmm. But I think the whole story around this movie kind of fails because there is no conventional version of Peter Parker or really any conventional Spider-Man who would side with Miguel in this story. That fact kind of makes the story flimsy at best because you cannot sit there and tell me sincerely that someone like spectacular Peter Parker would be like, yeah, Miles... Maybe we should let your dad die. <laughs> you know? And that goes... Obviously, the, the characters that matter, the ones that have actual, like, speaking roles and who are prominent in the movie, they realize the issue towards the end and they, they, they kind of understand where Miguel is wrong. And obviously, Miguel is not entirely wrong either. He went through some shit to make him feel the way he does. And I'm mm -hmm. sure that's going to come back up in, in the third one in Beyond the Spider-Verse where he's going to kind of realize the error of his ways. 
I, I know for a fact that plot thread is going somewhere that will make me happy. And I, 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 I know it will. But this movie kind of suffers because I have to wait like three more years at least before the next one comes out. Mm. So I'm kind of stuck feeling like this feels wrong. You know, like... This is what I was, what Pat and I were discussing before, and because I remember driving him home one day and we had a discussion about the plot holes in this movie. And I kept telling him that Miguel's not saying something. There's supposed to be... I feel like Miguel is holding back a little bit more information than we think. And it's yeah, very no, key information that will probably be brought up later. That, that's what I... I don't want to talk about this movie for too long because we have an episode. Yeah. Um, but I like I I I 100% believe that by the time Beyond the Spider Verse comes out, I'm gonna feel differently because we're gonna get the resolution, right? Because this this yeah. Into the Spider Verse is a complete movie. This isn't. This is not a complete movie. It's part one of a two of a two part story. There's yeah. information we're missing. There's information that's purposely omitted because they have to set that up in the second. That the nature of it being part one and part two is they're purposely withholding information so that they could tie up those loose threads in the next movie and that's fine but right now i'm working with what i was given and you cannot convince me that any version of spider-man would be like yeah maybe miguel has a point no i, I don't believe you i'm sorry for, for me like it's just that the movie cock blocked me you know to say it to say it uh in the most blunt way possible this movie cock blocked me i i was i was like i was really getting into it and then it, it it's it's not finished yet. I have to wait a few years to watch the ending of this movie, which is gonna be two hours long. And like, okay, like it's a two parter. Everyone know everyone knew it was gonna be a two parter going into it, but I didn't know it was gonna be like so like like so connected to the second part. I don't know how to say it. This movie doesn't end. This movie has no ending. Yeah, exactly. This movie doesn't have an ending it kind of just like it leaves on a cliffhanger leaves on a huge cliffhanger and i mentioned this in our episode about this movie where i said it would have been way better if the movie ended of like maybe 20 minutes earlier like if the movie would have ended 20 minutes earlier than it actually ended i would have felt better about it but um what we got is in my eyes an unfinished product yeah I agree. Mm -hmm. I, agree I, I still love the movie. I, I, I have it as I have 4 out of 5. I still love it. I think it's great. But the reality is, it's not done. It's not and done. What, what happened here is, like, you know, I, I, got my, I got my entree. You know, I'm at a restaurant. I got my entree. And they brought me the main course, and then I'm cutting into my steak, and I'm enjoying it. But then they took the plate away from me halfway through the steak. I only had, like, two of my pieces of broccoli, and I had one potato. And they took the plate away from me, and they're giving it back to me in two years. Yeah, it's like... It's like Normally, like if you go to any like any other movie, they give you your entree, then you have your main course, and you get your dessert. And for for Spy for this movie, Spider Man Across the Spider Verse, you get your entree, you start eating the main course, they take it away from you. You don't even get your dessert. You you see your dessert in two years when you finish your main course. There's just it's really funny to think about. You'll see your dessert in two years. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't think the way they did it is wrong or bad but i'm still stuck with what i was given right now and uh, may maybe when beyond comes out i'm gonna walk out of beyond and be like this is the best trilogy ever yeah probably. <laughs> yeah like uh, I, I i know uh, across the spider-verse got huge praise and like for the whole time it was getting praise i just straight up did not understand why and like I, I haven't rewatched it yet. Maybe I should rewatch it because I felt the exact same way about Into the Spider Verse. When I when I watched it for the first time, I thought it was fine, and everybody said it was the best thing ever. And I never got, I never understood why, until I watched it a second time. And and it, I think that might happen again with Across the Spider Verse. I haven't felt the want to rewatch it yet. Maybe well now it's on streaming, so maybe I will. But it's I'm still I I'm still going to feel that something is missing and until Beyond the Spider-Verse comes out I'm not going to be satisfied. And once it comes out I'll be able to watch both these movies back to back and maybe if I do that it's going to be amazing. It's going to be like the best thing ever. Yeah, like maybe when Beyond comes out it'll it'll you know be perfect and and, and maybe it'll be terrible, who knows. But at least when Beyond comes out we'll have the completed movie 
But right now we're we're we were stuck with what we were given, and what we were given is is half a meal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about it more maybe one day. Yeah, I, I would love to revisit that movie. I would like to as well. So what else did I watch in June? So I watched Juno in June. Funny. I actually did watch Juno in June. <laughs> uh, we also, on a whim, this is a rewatch, but I'm going to say this anyway because it's funny. For a few years, maybe two years, I would say, because commercials don't run for very long. Every time we would go to the movie theater, we would see this Verbo ad with Kermit singing a song. It's from The Muppets Take Manhattan. And like that song has kind of been an inside joke between us for a while. Uh, and then we finally decided to actually fucking watch The Muppets Take Manhattan. So we did. And it was great. I love that movie. That movie's so good. Well, you guys have seen it, right? Well, we watched it all together. What's, what's your take on The Muppets Take Manhattan? I didn't watch it with you. I watched it on my own. You weren't there? No, I wasn't. Yeah, I watched wasn't. it on my own. Missed out, dude. You missed out. <laughs> you missed out on Look at me. Here no. I am. Right, right where I belong. <laughs> Frank Oz directed this movie. The one and only. Cute movie. I love The Muppets Take Manhattan. It's one of my favorites. It's definitely my favorite Muppet movie. Uh, and then uh, another on a whim thing. Pat recommended that uh, we watch Son of Batman. So we just watched, we watched it. This is the second... Yeah, this is the second uh, DC animated movie I've seen. I watched the Flash one. What's it called? Uh, Flashpoint Paradox. Yeah, Flashpoint Paradox. We watched that. And, uh, you know, it was pretty good. It was pretty funny, actually. I liked the uh, Son of Batman uh, quite a bit. And um, I, I, am ju I just found out from looking on Letterboxd that this is actually a series of movies. There's four movies in this series. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Oh, okay, no, so, they're all fine. They're so yeah, fine Son of Batman is first, then there's Batman versus Robin, then Batman Bad Blood, and Batman Hush, and I know, Steph, you've told me to watch Batman Hush, mm -hmm. a lot of people have told me to watch Batman Hush, I need to watch this. Because that was the inspiration, it was that in Zodiac, that was the inspiration for Robert Pattinson's Batman. Ah, okay. So you'll, you'll see a lot of elements with it. Yeah, I know. So I know we've, we we watched uh, The Batman recently, and uh, Pat was talking about how Hush would be a good villain. But yeah, so we watched Son of Batman. It was pretty good, and uh, uh, I'm going to read my review for that. It's only one word. Bat Dad. Uh, and the last movie I quote-unquote watched was Boyhood. Now I say quote-unquote uh, because... Well, I've seen it before, and uh, I think we've mentioned it in passing on the podcast once or twice that I don't really like Boyhood. But uh, one time I had a dream, and I dreamed about the movie Boyhood. Like, I dreamed the movie, and it, so I logged it. <laughs> Man saw a whole film in his head. <laughs> I watched a movie in my sleep, and then I logged it, and then uh, when I logged it, I, I wrote... I dreamt of this movie last night. The dream version was better. <laughs> I should vlog uh, Beyond the Spider-Verse then, because I dreamed that movie. You know, it's, fun. it's five out of five. <laughs> it's perfect. It's, it's perfect. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's what I watched in June. How was your June? Uh, I watched nothing that I can talk about aside from Spider-Verse. So, yeah. <laughs> all right good good month not right. like, you, don't, you don't even have movies that like refer to the podcast yeah I'll, but they're all, i'm not gonna them. mention them because we're skipping over those right? <laughs> i watched i watched juno i watched muppets take manhattan i watched okay. Spider-Man neighborhood <laughs> oh okay. all, wow it was all just podcast movies i watched spider-man 3 wow awesome. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow that's your spider-man <laughs> reference for today even though we talked about spider-man june, june was a quiet month it, it picks up it picks up okay so i had a little Hot summer for movies. Aside from watching a spider on my wall, I saw The Boogeyman. The Boogeyman. <laughs> the Boogeyman. <laughs> <laughs> the boogeyman. <laughs> it's mid. It's kind of mid. It's all right. I actually had really good high hopes for this movie. I saw the trailer for it. And I'm like, oh, fucking yeah. It's been a while since I've seen a Boogeyman movie. I barely got to see anything because it was it was all fucking dark. And they all had a dimly lit flashlight, so I couldn't even see the monster properly. Ah, wasted potential that's all that's all i'll say for bookman uh then i went to go with my friend michelle again he's back he's back for round two and dante you you all you guys out there know should know dante from jw and we watched uh transformers rise of the beasts solid that's all i gotta say about transformers it's like hey it's been a while since i've seen a pretty decent transformers film and like here it is then i saw what potentially might be 
my worst, like my least favorite superhero movie of all time. I saw The Flash. I watched that one too. <laughs> I didn't. It's so awful. Bad. It's so bad. God awful. And a huge disrespect to the unfortunate uh, demise of some of the, of the actors playing these characters. I, I don't know how they fucking thought about that, but whatever. Awful movie. Sucks. The Flash should be studied. <laughs> on how, what? On how, on how not to do a superhero? Mm. I, I think the the Flash is the perfect encapsulation of what's wrong with current superhero movies. It's just cameos, mindless cameos, by the way, that don't matter to the story at all. So you could just mm. point at the screen and be like, "I know who that is. I know Michael Keaton. Wow, I remember him." Even though, like, Michael Keaton being Batman in this movie doesn't serve any other purpose. It's just a reference, okay? They, they show a bunch of, like Steph said, dead actors in this movie. They use, like, AI or, or CGI to put these dead actors into this movie. And it's so disrespectful. And it's only for, admittedly, people like me to point at the screen and be like, well, I know who that is. You know? The movie says nothing interesting. The movie does nothing interesting. It is Flashpoint. But worse in every way imaginable. I cannot believe they put this out. This is it's it is. Which it's big even, name director said like said praise about this film? It was, it was um, a big name director. It was uh, not Zack Snyder. Um, it might have been Zack Snyder. I don't remember. It was either. I think Tom Cruise said something too. James Gunn said it was fantastic before the movie came out. Then it came out that he he has said nothing about it since. Which I get it, right? The movie's not out yet. You have to promote it. You have to advertise it. You want to make money. You're not going to be mm -hmm. like, yeah, this movie sucks, by the way. This movie with my name attached to it? Dog shit. Obviously, they're not going to do that. But this movie sucks. I, 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 it, is, it is awful. I would not recommend it to anybody. I gave it two and a half stars. I'm lowering it to a two right now. <laughs> and it only has a two because uh, Michael Keane's in it. And I'm part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> he's critical, but he's honest. <laughs> Go watch the go watch the animated Flashpoint movie. Go, like it's watch, ten times better. Yeah, go watch the animated Flashpoint. Go read the comic. Go watch. Go read the comic. Literally anything else with your time. Don't watch this movie. It's awful. It's god awful. Uh, then I watched uh, Jennifer Lawrence's movie No Hard Feelings. Oh yeah, we we watched that too. Uh, we watched it in August. I felt awkward the entire movie. Not a lot of things made me laugh. I don't know. I get it's supposed to be a comedy movie. Eh. Uh, I, I missed raunchy comedies like this. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I, I got a couple laughs out of me. Yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was okay. It was not not the best comedy. Not the worst. Yeah. yeah I don't know. Pretty much Meh. it. But then we skyrocket with Asteroid City by Wes Anderson. Ooh. Great movie. Really Rocking good movie. I watched movie. it. I watched it this year. Wes Anderson. Never off point. Always. <laughs> and while he was doing this, he directed, I think, three to four little mini short films based off of Ronald Dahl books for Netflix while he was doing this movie. And they're all bangers. <laughs> I fucking love Wes Anderson. It, 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 it's, it amazes me what Wes Anderson is capable of doing. Like, it's, it's crazy. Like, every, everything... Everything he does, <clears throat> sorry, everything he does is, is really good. Like, I, I, do, I have friends who, like, swear by Wes Anderson, like, everything he makes is good. I think what, what, whenever we talk about Wes Anderson, the only mention, the only, uh, movie they never mention is Bottle Rocket. But, like, that was his first movie, right? So, like, it was... That was, yeah, that was his first movie. Like, don't get me wrong, I wouldn't say Wes Anderson has created a quote-unquote bad film. But he's definitely had weaker films. Yeah. Mainly his earlier work. But then he started... I don't know how. I don't know if it started with Grand Budapest. Maybe it was Moonrise Kingdom. But then when he start started getting his stride and perfecting the style that he wanted to do, hasn't missed since. Yeah, I think I think the thing that he... Where he found his stride, I think, is Royal Tenenbaums is when he found it. Yes. So Royal Tenenbaums, uh, 2001... That's when I think that's when he found it. Hasn't made a shit movie since. Yeah, honestly, all his movies are great. And Asteroid City, I watched it in November, uh, but we'll talk about it now. Like, uh, even Pat, you watched it with me, right? 
Yeah, we watched it together. Yeah, uh, Asteroid City was fantastic, and I, I would honest, I would love to do an episode on it. I fucking love his style of comedy too. It's like dry comedy, but like there's no reaction. Like there's the scene where uh, Bruce Campbell is your Spider-Man reference. Um, he was fixing up a car, and as he's explaining, like a, a, I don't know, a piece of the motor or some doohickey falls out of the car. And then the main character cuts him off and goes, hey, what's that? And then they look at it for like two seconds. And then Bruce Campbell goes, hmm, I have no idea. And then <laughs> proceeds to talk about what he was talking about. <laughs> I, it's so funny. It's like, it's like quick. It's like, it's like, they, they, it's like, I don't know how to say it. It's like this lightning fast humor. And like, like they, they say one joke and they move on. You know, the bit in Top Gear where james james may was talking about the dacia yeah he's like oh terrible news the dacia isn't uh being released in brighton and then jeremy replies with oh no anyways and yeah, that, that's, that's wes anderson's comedy that's wes yeah, anderson's comedy it. for sure i love it so much really good movie yeah awesome movie all of you should check that out listen if french dispatch didn't get nominated for an oscar this is for sure, I hope it does. I really hope. Like, uh, even it even best picture. To. Like, please, they put it in something. <laughs> on Academy, put anything, it in something. <laughs> Come on, Academy. But after going off of Astro Asteroid City, I watched Ruby Gilman Teenage Kra Kraken, which was DreamWorks's film after Puss in Boots. People keep shitting on the animation. I think the animation is fine. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like books like Hey God, It's Me, Margaret. That's what this movie reminds me of. It's books like that. Um, and it really shows. I thought the animation was fine for what the theme was going off of. And it's all squiddy and sea themed. Like nothing is ever stiff. Nothing still. Nobody has edges. It's all curves. And it fits. And it's a it's just like a run of the mill teenage movie. And I, I thought it was all right. Three out of five. And that was my tune. Yeah, I guess uh, uh, we didn't have a that much in june i have even less uh in in a in, in a month that's coming up but uh not in july in july i had uh one movie you should have we, you technically well, you, you should have watch, three you didn't you didn't watch there's, there's some movies here that i know you watched but we didn't watch them together so yeah we didn't watch i watched together. two movies in july me and you yeah uh none that were new there was, there was two that was released in july that we went to go watch we didn't i don't think we watched them in july then in july the only new movie i watched was the wolverine so you know as you guys know pat uh, really wants me to watch logan and he tasked me uh, i want to say two years ago <laughs> to, to uh, uh get the x-men movies through so i could watch logan uh so I, I watched uh, The Wolverine, and that's where I'm at right now. Uh, my, I think my next movie is uh, Deadpool, and then Days of Future Past, and then Deadpool 2, and then Logan. The rest are all good. Yeah, the rest are all good. I'm, I'm looking, I have seen Deadpool already, so I'm looking forward to rewatching it. I'm really looking forward to Days of Future Past. I've heard a lot of good things about it. Um, but The Wolverine was uh, not good. Why did Wolverine get two different shitty solo movies in the same like in like in the like it's in two years like in two years he got two movies in the same continuity like it doesn't make any sense yeah like wolverine's a really beloved character but they did his origin already so like i don't know maybe lay off the wolverine <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, and also in July, uh, because we, if you guys remember, we did the, uh, episode on the Indiana Jones movies. Uh, this was when, like, this was, uh, when Pat was working a really long shift and it was a really boring day and we decided to watch all three Indiana Jones movies in one day. It was fun. It was good. Uh, they're all really great movies, but if you want to hear more detail about the four Indiana Jones movies... Uh, including Crystal Skull, go check out that episode. And yes, we are still gonna do an episode on Dial of Destiny because we did promise you guys that. Don't worry, that's still happening. Maybe next episode, who knows? Uh, but that that's all I watched in July. It was only the Wolverine that was new. Uh, I watched Mission Impossible: Dead Man Reckoning Part One. Good flick. Kind of has the Spider Verse problem, but it, it's this movie actually ends. So that's a bonus. <laughs> Good bonus. Um, I like Mission Impossible movies. I like watching Tom Cruise movies. Tom Cruise himself, very different opinion. But Tom Cruise in these movies, he's he's a crazy, funny guy. 
I like watching him do these crazy stunts, and uh, it's very high energy. I like this one uh, quite a bit. I watched Flash, which I talked about. I'm going to skip the next two for now. I watched Shin Kamen Rider. It's the new Kamen Rider movie. Um, Kamen Rider is a Japanese Power Rangers type thing. I'm not going to get into that here, but it was really good. I enjoyed it quite a bit. It's very gory. It's very 80s Japanese action movie. It's really good. I watched One Piece Baron Omatsuri and the Secret Island for the first time. Sure. Okay. It's One Piece. <laughs> I watched No Hard Feelings, which uh, I talked about earlier. It's good. Elemental, we talked about earlier. I enjoyed it quite a bit. And I watched Joyride. I believe Steph watched that with me? Uh, I I think I watched Someone that with you. Someone was with me. Someone was with me when I watched I it. I think I watched that with you because I also watched Joyride. Yeah. I, watched, has to be I watched you. Joyride in August. Joyride is uh, it's fine. I give it a 3 out of 5. Yeah, that was fine. I, I gave it, I gave it two and a half. You know, it's, it's funny. I wouldn't rewatch it, but it was I, for what it was. It was enjoyable. And the two movies I skipped, um, they're podcast movies, but they're big ones. Uh, Barbie and Oppenheimer. These are the movies I watched in July. Steph and Lib watched in August, I believe, because Steph was on his trip at this time. I'm pretty sure. I was on a vacation. You were on a fucking boat. <laughs> I was on a boat. I, uh, I'm on a boat. <laughs> I went in July. Also, I just realized that all the other movies I read, that One Piece to Joyride, were in August. Oops. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> uh, yeah, um... Yeah, Oppenheimer, Barbie. We have an episode. It's a it's a bonus episode that we did on both of them. The Oppenheim the the Barbenheimer experience. Yeah, that was that was our last episode actually. That was a fun movie to to see. They were both fun movies to see. They're both fantastic movies that I hope get a lot of love this year. They did at the Golden Globes. I'm sure they'll continue to at the Oscars. I guess we'll talk about them more when we do the Oscars episode because that's usually on the table for us. So we'll get there when we get there. Otherwise, that's it for July and half my August. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steph, uh, well, how was your July? Omit August, please. <laughs> I was on, I don't know, Blib. I was on a boat. <laughs> oh, yeah, he was on a fucking boat. He didn't watch any movies. What a uh, bastard. I, I, I mean, like, in terms of the movie that were released in July that I ended up catching up later, I did watch Joyride with Pat. I watched Oppenheimer and Barbie with you in August. Oh yeah, I was not on the podcast, uh, so to give my little critique on both of them, fucking awesome. Fucking love both of them. Yeah. We watched it back to back and it was a great time. We did the Barbenheimer experience, shout out to Cineplex. <laughs> without diving in too much, because I would love to fucking just talk about them. But without diving in too much, brilliant, brilliant films, brilliant, brilliant acting, brilliant writing, brilliant cinematography, brilliant everything. <laughs> everything. Everything. And the last movie that came out in July that I ca caught up with August was a YouTube movie, actually. It was created by uh, a couple of guys, Australian fellas, called Raka Raka. That was our YouTube channel, and they created Talk To Me. That's all right. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> I feel like there was I feel like they wanted to tell they wanted to tell more with the story I felt it I knew they wanted to tell more with the story but for I don't know why but I felt like something was holding them back for a bit because this has a lot of potential and it's fine still a good watch it needs that extra kick that chutzpah <laughs> talk to me uh, that's like that's one of the movies that were on the Oscar shortlist wasn't it I think so no actually was it I don't think so. I don't think the Oscars considered this movie. Talk to me is on my watch list. Yeah, it's on my watch list too. I don't know. Still a solid watch. Well, yeah, maybe uh, one day I'll uh, I'll check it out. But yeah, um, I didn't know that was a YouTube. Oh, movie. yeah, you know, it, it's on it's on the short list. It's still a worthy watch, and even if it gets nominated at the Oscars, like I could totally understand. I still feel like it's it's missing that kick. It's missing that bit of information, that bit of punch to the audience. You know, I wanna I wanna be scared. Well, apparently a prequel is in the works, and a sequel. And uh, that'll be awesome, I can't wait for that prequel. But that was my- aside from me being stranded in the middle of the ocean, <laughs> uh, that was it. <laughs> you know, le legit talk, guys, this is like, this is real. I actually did this, cause like when- when- cause he- he would join VC sometimes while he was on the boat, and um... Well, he was on a cruise ship, we keep calling it a boat, it was a cruise. And uh... <laughs> I was on a sailboat. <laughs> On a fish. river boat. 
we found the boat he was on on uh, on this like website that tracks boats and we just kept it open it was uh, i kept it open i was tracking it the whole time <laughs> to make sure he didn't fucking crash <laughs> that's so funny that's hilarious yeah. actually <laughs> you don't remember when just i showed you the website I, I remember I showing you website. the website i don't know which website you use my mother uses that <laughs> um yeah but that was our july and then i got back home and i went up to lib and i asked him what movies did you watch in august and then i told him well i watched uh i well fun fact i didn't re-watch anything in august all of my august watches were brand new first time watches uh which honestly i think is the first time that's ever happened <laughs> to me <laughs> So, uh, uh, when, when Steph walked up to me when he came back and told me, uh, what did you watch in August? Well, I told him, well, I watched No Country for Old Men, which was really good. It was for the podcast, but it was really, really good, and I recommend that to everybody. I watched No Hard Feelings. It was okay. Uh, we watched Joyride. It was also okay. And I watched Elemental. We mentioned Elemental before, but yeah, Elemental's really good, and you guys should watch it. Watch Elemental. Uh, and then... After I told him that, he w uh, Steph said, "Cool, want to watch Barbenheimer?" <laughs> so then, uh, so then we uh, we did that double feature, and man, was it a great fucking movie. Pa uh, Steph and Pat already said everything that you could really say about Barbenheimer, and it, it was like, it was amazing. It was it was such a good fucking, both good fucking movies, man. Now I'm just gonna go straight into my September right now because I didn't watch any movies in September. <laughs> I, oh, okay. I I only rewatched I rewatched Ninja Turtles and Ninja Turtles Two. Same. same. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna skip my August and say I also only watched two movies and that was those two. I didn't watch any new movies in September. <laughs> <laughs> but for August, there's three more movies. Uh, I watched Blue Beetle in theaters by myself. Uh, it's fine. It was okay. Mm -hmm. Don't hate it. Don't love it. Wish I loved it a little bit more than I ended up watching loving it, but eh, it's fine. It's, a, it's not a bad movie by any stretch. I really like um, Zolo in it. He's the guy from Cobra Kai. He's great in it. Um, I watched Ninja Turtles I Mean Mayhem. Great movie. The Oscars seem to have forgotten about it on the shortlist, which is weird. But uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really good. And that's all for August. <laughs> the only thing I, I have to say about September is... Go ninja, go ninja, go. <laughs> go ninja, go September, ninja, go. So I guess Steph do both August and September. I guess. Uh, but yes, as Lib has mentioned, I know that I mentioned Barbie and Arkham uh, during um, was it July? July? But like we watched it in August because I came back from the from the boat. And as Lib and I were walking out of the theater, he asked me, "Hey, how was your trip on the boat?" And I told him, "Let me tell you the last voyage of the Demeter." Uh, this was a movie that I saw. <laughs> <laughs> I really tried making that segue work. Uh, <laughs> that's what my boat was called. Uh, it, it's it's another vampire movie. This is about again Dracula, but it's about this transport boat, this transport ship that were transporting goods, and in one of the boxes they stumbled across the tomb of Dracula. And they stored it away on the boat. They kind of have a teeny, teeny bit problem. Dracula is not necessarily dead in his tomb. So during the night, he goes around and he starts festering on people on the ship. And then his wife comes along. It's a whole story. You guys should go watch it. Is it good? It's pretty good. It's all good. If you like Pirates of the Caribbean and you also like grim war sort of tales, pretty freaking good. As Pat mentioned, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. Awesome movie. Once again, the animation is the star of the movie. I have my icks with it. One being, at times, at least for me, when I was watching the movie, I found it, the art style and the backgrounds blend so well together that at times, it was hard for me to follow where the characters were going. At least within the action sequences. That, I have my icks with the writing sometimes. I get it. They're supposed to be teenagers. This is an actual, t what teenagers would actually talk like would actually act like and they brought in actual teenage i think it was actual teenagers right seth rogan voices one of them stuff oh the turtles yeah they're teenagers yeah fucking <laughs> no the turtle dumb shit <laughs> <laughs> why would i be you. talking about the other cast member <laughs> i don't know i can tell you i would imagine not i'd imagine they got celebrity voices 
Yeah, they got celebrity voices to voice the uh, the extras, the supporting cast. But as for the main cast, they were teenagers. And I get that's how they riff off of each other. That's how they act. That's how they talk. That's awesome. I feel like you, they've done too much of that. That it takes away from very serious moments and it gets annoying. And there's some jokes that, la that go on for far too long and it gets annoying. And I'm going to say this right now because I'm assuming that everybody out there has watched this movie already. These fucking kids are not ready for Shredder. Yeah, no, they are not ready for Shredder. And Shredder is teased at the end of the movie. So Shredder... And apparently, because there's going to be a TV series and there's going to be a movie, that this Shredder is supposed to be very threatening and very brutal. I don't... It could, they compared it to another Shredder, like a Shredder's past. I don't think it's Rise, but it's another Shredder. I, to me, right now, Rise's Shredder is the most threatening Shredder out there. Apparently, this Shredder is supposed to be as threatening or even worse. These kids are not fucking ready for him. Yeah, these turtles are dead. These these turtles, first first brawl, first first match, they're dead. <laughs> well, I I haven't uh, I haven't seen Mutant Mayhem yet. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> but I need to. No, it's okay. Uh, but I need I need to watch that. I, I, it's been on my wish list for way too long. <laughs> it's uh, good. The other movie that I watched and I completely forgot the month we were talking about. August. August. <laughs> Michelle is back. <laughs> Myself and Michelle are back for a third round, and we watched Blue Beetle. It's very Marvel. For That's a DC my critique movie, on it. It's very Marvel. It it looks, sounds, acts, camera sh uh, camera works, lights, editing, pretty much like I this I, you could convince me this is a Marvel film. Uh, but aside from that, that is my August. But as for my September, because I I just remember now that you guys wanted me to continue in September. Yeah, because we we both didn't watch anything in September. <laughs> In September, I watched the Equalizer trilogy, and I was pleasantly surprised to know that Equalizer 3 takes place in our hometown, Spaghetti Land. <laughs> really? <laughs> not, uh, no, not, uh, not Quebec. Uh, Italy. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, there's no way that they filmed it in Montreal. <laughs> no, 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 they didn't film it in Montreal. They filmed it in Italy. And the majority of the, the movie is all spoken in, in, in Italian. Oh, wow. The majority. And I was pleasantly surprised. I'm like, huh, spaghetti representation. Very nice. Spaghetti. And fucking, uh, what's his name? Denzel Washington? Man, does he speak very good fucking Italian. Holy shit. Wow. And he's not Italian at all. Uh, afterwards, I watched Dumb Money, which is the GameStop documentary. I know this is a documentary. I know it's just documenting events. That's what no, a documentary you, you can, is. You can, you can talk about documentaries. No, no, hold on. It's stupid. The oh. whole situation is so fucking dumb. <laughs> and the people that were in this, that, that played the side characters who were gaining money and gaining money and gaining money and not fucking doing the one thing they should have done at the very fucking beginning, because I don't want to spoil it, ended up not getting their just desserts. And they're fucking morons for it. Damn. God, these, these dumb people. Dumb money. Dumb people. <laughs> Gee, wow, you really didn't like it. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, like, I don't like the situation anyways. Like, this is just copying what happened with the GameStop stock market situation anyways. I don't like the situation. Yeah, the situation was pretty dumb. However, we then skyrocket to my fixation for the whole month and probably the next month too. I watched Saw 10. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is when it started. <laughs> this is when it started. I've only briefly watched the Saw movies, but I thought no nothing of it. I saw Saw 10. Uh, actually, no, sorry. That's a complete lie. There was last year or the year before that that I decided to watch the Saw movies backwards for no reason. And then when Saw 10 released, I saw Saw 10. I really, really fucking loved it. I thought it was a really good take on this, on the, on this character that we haven't seen for a very long time. Uh, I think it's worth it. Watch the traps are okay. I've seen better ones that he's made, but it's pretty good. And the situation that they're in really takes a twist on the whole scenario because for the majority of the Saw movies, and for the record, I'm talking about John Kramer. Anybody who has watched Saw understands that yes, the main villain is Saw, but the whole point of the Saw movies is to play on like, well, who's the actual shithead in all this? But Saw's, the, but John Kramer is the one who put them in this scenario. He's kind of the villain, and we're not necessarily rooting for John Kramer. This movie is the only movie where I root for John Kramer. And it's interest it's an interesting feeling. Yeah, so Saw is a franchise it. without heroes. Yeah. That's yeah. the best way I could describe it. I, I never it is, I I don't get Saw. I don't get it. To me it's not enjoyable, but um yeah, I know I know there's people out there who love these movies. 
I don't really have an opinion on Saw. I've seen a few of them. I haven't enjoyed any of them. Then there was a Martin Scorsese's big hit, his comeback to cinema, which is Killers of the Flower Moon. I know you two watched it, like, I think about a week or two ago. I watched it in September. Saw the movie. All right. Not his best work, but not his worst work. In the middle. I'll talk more about Killers of the Flower Moon when it comes up. Um, but yeah, I, I do have some opinions on it. Uh, then I saw, which I'm assuming is based on a true story called Pain Hustlers. Uh, this is starring Chris Evans and Emily Blunt. And it's meh. All right. These are, this is about, for those of you who don't know, this is about people that extort, um, extort this drug that's experimental and actually does more harm than good. But yeah, that's not. That's my... Oh, I accidentally trespassed over October. <laughs> Whoopsie. That's okay. Uh, I'll stop it there. I'll stop it there and I'll pass it to Liv for his October because I still have one more movie that we, we've seen in October that we could all talk about later. Yeah, well, there's a there's, there's a few that uh, I think all three of us can talk about. Uh, so in October, we, were, we wanted to uh, watch a horror movie every Friday, I think was what we wanted to do. We, we kind of did it, uh, but in October, that's when... I started school, and uh, that's when I stopped watching movies. <laughs> so the re the rest of my lists are gonna be pretty uh, empty. Uh, but in October, uh, we saw as for, and I know uh, just another thing. Um, last because we went on our hiatus, we couldn't do Spooktober last year. But uh, that doesn't mean we didn't watch any horror movies. So I guess this could be your mini Spooktober episode <laughs> uh, for to, for uh, last to make up for last year. We watched uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Friday the Thirteenth, and Saw Two. I wasn't there for when they watched Saw One, but I was there for Saw Two. <laughs> I he picked it up. Saw, I watched Saw One in November. You watched it in November? I wasn't there. For, well, I wasn't there for that. Yeah, I only started the Saw Marathon in November. I don't know why you watched Saw Two in October. But... I have, I have Saw Two. I have Saw. Oh no, Saw Two is November fourth. Sorry. Yeah, but... Also, uh, for the record, um, Killers of the Flower Moon and Pain Hustlers I saw in October, not September. Oh, okay. Excuse me. Texas Chainsaw Massacre was pretty good. It was like you know, classic horror movie. Uh, when you think of like seventies horror, you usually think of something that's like not scary at all, right? Like Texas Chainsaw Massacre is not that scary. It's like. It's more of a, I guess in today's standards, it's more of a thriller than it is a horror movie. But I'm sure, like, like there's a lot of screaming in this movie, and I'm sure it was fucking terrifying back in the day. Uh, I, I remember thinking that while we were watching it. Uh, but yeah, it was very gory, too. A lot, a lot more gory than I thought it would be. I've never seen this movie, so it was a lot more gory than I thought it would be. Uh, Pat, we, we, we watched, Pat, you were there when we watched it. Yeah, I was there when we watched it. Um, it, it was a rewatch for me because I'd already seen it. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was I, good. I I really like this one. I think it, I think it's a very a fun thriller to put on. Same with Friday the Thirteenth. I've already seen it. I've watched it for the first time. I think. Yeah, I watched uh, Friday the Thirteenth for the first time, and <laughs> I just, uh, I think St Steph, you were there when 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 we were watching Friday the Thirteenth, and I remember. Uh, how how much you were laughing about how angry I got at this movie? <laughs> like I I I I gave it like I, I fucking I don't know. <laughs> like everything, everything that the characters do in this movie, it's like they want to die. Yeah, but because like that that was the thing that Lib had a like a like a struggle to understand as well. I'm not saying myself and and Pat understand it either. We don't. But at the time. That's what that's what acting was in terms of these slasher films. They're all supposed to play really, really stupid, naive people. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're supposed to just supposed to be dumb. Because if they, if they if characters in slasher movies were smart, we wouldn't have slasher. Yeah, because like because like Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out before Friday the Thirteenth, and it was way more well put together than Friday the Thirteenth, I think. And like I I guess I guess I just. I guess I just didn't enjoy it. I guess that's just the bottom line. I just didn't enjoy it. I, I get it's a classic. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't that bad. It was like two and a half. I gave it two and a half. Uh, but two and a half men. Two men. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah. And then the the last new thing I watched in October was Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. And again, we will do an episode. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I guess we won't talk about that for now. We won't talk about that for now. Not, but yeah, that is something we both watch together. Yeah, so stay tuned. The only movie I watched that Lib didn't already mention, and I have to say this, like, October's a short one. My November and my December are very long. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll be excited for that. Uh, yeah, the only movie I watched was RRR. Um, it's great. It's fantastic. I loved it. I gave it uh, five stars. Or four and a half stars, sorry. I gave it four and a half stars. It's, it's great. If you haven't seen it, uh, it's on Netflix. Please watch it. Yeah, actually, I would like to read my review for RRR, actually. I didn't do that before, but now that you mention it. So, I, I, it's, it's, uh, I don't like making full reviews a lot. I usually like to be a little jokey. But the, are, for the five, five star movies and one star movies, I go really <laughs> in detail. Uh, but for RRR, I just wrote, this is what I wrote. Steph, first of all, have you seen it? RR? No, I have not yet seen it yet. Okay, you really should. Uh, so, uh, there's no spoilers in this review. Sometimes, a movie comes out that's so good, so action-packed, so emotional, so well-written, so unequivocally fucking breathtaking, that you can unironically describe it as perfect. This is one of those times. It is phenomenal. It is one of the best movies I've ever seen. It is. It is. Please watch it if you haven't. It's really. Cool. Please watch it. I wish I watched it for the Oscars last year, like year before, because that was nominated for an Oscar, obviously. But I, I didn't have time to watch it at, the, at, at that time. Glad I watched it now because it's 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 great. It's just it's just fantastic. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is that it for your October? Yep. I, everything else oh. we watch is our stuff that mentioned. So. Oh, guys, you guys missed a movie that we watched. I don't know if it was on October. Or was it the beginning of November? What was what it? Uh, for the audience. Let me paint you a picture. Once upon a time, Lib, Pat, and I, and a couple of our friends decided to get a little peckish one day. And we were trying to shoot ideas for what kind of food we were going to get. And Lib mentioned pizza. So we went to the only pizza joint we could have found late at night. We went to Freddy's. It was five, we, watched, we watched Five Nights at Freddy's. We watched that in November. Oh, we watched that in November. Oh, we watched that in November? This is why I tell you to use Letterboxd. <laughs> <laughs> we watched it on November 5th. You know, you know what, Steph? Steph, that is your New Year's resolution this year is to use Letterboxd. <laughs> I cho- I'm choosing your New Year's resolution for you. <laughs> Yeah, I guess we might as well talk about that now. We did watch Five Nights at Freddy's. Get it out of the way because it's it's a movie that I don't know if you guys wanted to do for a podcast. No, I I, I wanted to, but we ultimately decided against it, and now I don't want to anymore. So. Yeah, um, <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's uh was like fine. It was fine. Like it, I guess it it was not the best that they could do with this IP. But it was a safe choice. It certainly wasn't the worst. I gave it two out of five. I gave it. Uh, two and a half out of five. Yeah, there was a lot of wasted potential in this. There's a there was a huge amount of wasted potential. I expected it to be a lot worse. Though. Oh my 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 review. I'll read my review. Um, <laughs> Willie's Wonderland clears. I fear. <laughs> we'll elaborate more on the podcast. Smiley face. Yeah, that didn't happen. My review was it's better than I thought it would be, but I thought it was gonna be dog shit. This is only kind of shit. Better than I thought it was gonna be. Worse than what it could have been. I think the creator doesn't understand his own concept for the fucking franchise. He doesn't get it, man. <laughs> yeah, no, but I was like, These are, okay, I audiences at home, I want you to pay attention real close. Get closer to your screens. Or if you have, if you're audio, I guess if you're audio listeners, if you must be audio listeners, stick those earbuds real tight in your ears. This is a franchise about a serial killer who kidnaps kids and stuffs them into animatronic suits while a flash forward years later, a security guard is trying to survive these haunted animatronics as he himself is trying to avoid getting stuffed inside an animatronic suit. Now I'll just picture that. How gruesome it is. How what the fuck type of concept it is? Give me the script to your next fucking movie. I promise you'll you'll see you'll see, you want money you'll see money. You want <laughs> I, I'll no. I'll make people jump out of their seats. I don't want the script. Steph and I have talked about this off like in our personal time, and I want to get into it right now. But um, that was not gonna happen. That, that was never gonna happen. Look here, I, I'll uh, I'm gonna say something I never thought I would say in my entire life, Scott. For the next movie, let Matt Pat write the script. 
let Matt Pat write the script. I know he just I announced just that he just announced that he's retiring, but it doesn't mean he can't write a script. Like, he retired so he can work on the Five Nights at Freddy's sequel. Exactly. I thought you were just gonna say, Scott, don't. <laughs> no, it's Stop. gonna get a sequel. It made so Look, much. Look, it's money. it made a lot of money. Whether like it's a it's in the air if it's gonna get a sequel. I, my mind my, my my money's saying yes. Like so so let don't let someone else write it. Let someone else write it. Make me. Or write either it. way, I guess that I guess that tracks us to November. So I have to now say my November stuff. <laughs> Fuck you, Lib. <laughs> what? I got skipped. Yeah, you know what? You know what? Fuck you, Lib. Yeah. Fuck him. Oh, <laughs> come on. All right, Steph Gocha. Say say your fucking November. You're good. mark my words. You better sleep with one eye open tonight. <laughs> All right. So the first movie that was released in November that I watched. Was the killer uh, by of the Flower Moon? That's another <laughs> by David Fincher, uh, the guy who played Mysterio. I keep fucking forgetting his name. The guy who played Mysterio in uh, X Men First Class, the young Mysterio. That's him. And it's this uh, Mysterio? assassin killer. No, not Mysterio. Um, Magneto. Magneto. Thank you. Yeah, that's uh, Fassbender. Michael Fassbender. Michael Fassbender. His name is yeah. Michael Fassbender. It's about a assassin who gets uh, schafft from a job that he was assigned to and he blames his employers so he goes after essentially like mega man style he goes after like boss after boss to get his revenge and it's it's an interesting movie solid interesting now this is a movie that i watched later but it got released in november it's called dream scenario with nick cage oh yeah i, I watched that movie too yeah in, in december but yeah solid movie i love you a24 a24 hire me Oh, I would, I would love to work with you guys. A24 should make Five Nights at Freddy's. A24 should definitely fucking make it. Five Holy days. shit. Yeah, A A A24 <laughs> would not touch Five Nights at Freddy's with a 100 That's foot. why they should do it. But for a dream scenario, to make it very quick and brief my review of it, uh, great film. I think people should watch it. Uh, Nicolas Cage plays is a really good character, especially with the other characters. One ick with it. One ick. I don't think, realistically, this is how people would react. Not the first half of the film, without spoiling it. Not the first, not the second act of the film. The third act of the film. For the sake of context this is about cancel culture for the third act of the film in universe i know if they didn't react this way in the third act if like the the background characters and supporting characters didn't act this way in the third act we wouldn't have a movie and that's fair i don't think realistically this is how people would react to this scenario to this dream scenario. Yeah, this dream scenario <laughs> anyways moving right along good film i think you see like all of you should still go watch it Solid movie. Hey, remember Adam Sandler? We talked about him earlier this episode. We did, yeah. He's back. He's with an animated movie now. It's called Leo, where Can he I plays a it? talking lizard. And honestly, good movie. Really? <laughs> yeah. Honestly. I was just solid to movie. Crap. Uh, in summary, it's about this old lizard who has been in this classroom with his turtle friend, uh, Bill Burr, for many, many years, and he has gotten to this old age where he's terrified of death. And he feels like he hasn't lived. And it's a, a weirdly sweet movie. Solid movie. I think people should really go watch this animated movie. It's on Netflix. And Finalment, I've watched this later as well. But I want to mention this here since it's in front of my face. I watched Saltburn. What hasn't been said about this movie? I just was not expecting Barry Keoghan's penis. <laughs> Wasn't expecting it. Threw me for a curve. <laughs> and he, he he went on social media, confirmed it. Yeah, it's my penis. I'm like, huh? I watched right. uh, Saltburn in December. I did watch it. I'll talk about it now briefly because Lip hasn't seen it, and he's probably going to. So I'm not gonna get too into it right now. Mm -hmm. My hot take on this movie because Steph and I had a conversation about how he didn't get it. I didn't. And my hot take is: it's not that you didn't get it; it's that the movie's not actually saying anything. I think the movie thinks it is smarter than it actually is but in reality it's it's it is a dumb shock value not to say it's bad because i thought it was phenomenal i gave it like four and a half stars i think it's great but i think people were thinking that it's our people thought it was when they walk out of it that it's just like hyper intelligent uh, i didn't get it oh it's just this is so like artsy this is so uh, philosophical uh, no, I think it's I think it's dumb. I think it's a dumb shot value. And I agree to I agree with you to a certain point. But please watch it if you haven't lived. I highly recommend you watch it when you have time. Yeah, I need to watch it. It's Such great. It's it very very good. The performances are 
fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I like that we have our little Robert Pence and Junior in this movie, and I can't remember his name, but the actor from The Kissing Booth is in this. <laughs> and he's fantastic in it. I hope he goes on to be in a lot more things in the future. And not The Kissing Booth. Yeah, his name's uh, Jacob Elordi. Yeah, he's great. Uh, if you haven't seen this movie, audience, please please watch it. It's, it's phenomenal. It's weird. It's gross. But, but watch it. But as we mosey down and the snow starts to fall, it's Christmas time! Lib, what did you watch for Christmas month? Well, you skipped my Novembers. <laughs> you skipped my November. I thought you too. said I thought you said you didn't have a November. No, I have a no I have two. <laughs> I have a big November. <laughs> I thought okay, I thought all right. Go no, ahead, just, dude. No, no. Lib, go first because you're you're shorter. Yeah, you're go short. go first. Okay, so my my November is very short. Uh, like we said, we watched uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, then I watched um, at the time newest South Park, the newest South Park special called South Park Joining the Panderverse. And it was basically like, uh, like making fun of how everything needs to be in a multiverse now, and it's hilarious. One of the best, like it's honestly, it reminded me of peak South Park. That's how good it was. And keep in mind, guys, Pete South Park was like 20 years ago, right? <laughs> I mean, I feel like a South Park peaked when it one of its songs got nominated for an Oscar. Yeah, that, that was in 1999, right? So it was more than 20 years ago. So like, Peak South Park was like some of the best TV ever. And this special and a special that's coming up that I'm going to talk about in December. Uh, I guess I'll just talk about it now because we're on the topic of South Park. It's called South Park Not Suitable for Children. This special... And joining the Pandaverse really reminded me of peak South Park. It's like South Park was like going back to its roots and like going back to what made South Park so goddamn funny. Because I don't think South Park is bad now. I just think the newer seasons are, first of all, they're way too short. But second, they, they don't they don't cover the like topics they used to cover. But then in Not Suitable for Children, we saw Randy's penis. So I knew... South Park was back to its roots. <laughs> I mean, I'll talk about it now because I, I watched um, Not So Before Children with you. Not a South Park fan. Haven't watched any of the specials. Haven't watched a South Park episode to completion, I think, ever. But I've seen the movie, the old movie. I've seen that one. And I watched this because I was on the Discord call when they put it on. And I, it was funny. I laughed. Funny, funny special. South Park for me has always been like really like if family guy is considered turn your brain off south park is turn your entire body off you know like that that's how i've always seen south park and with the newer seasons it's like yeah they it kind of feels like they try a little too hard but with these two specials that that came out they they pulled out all the stops and it was fantastic i loved it Watched it too. It was solid. Welcome back, South Park. Welcome back. <laughs> uh, the last thing I want to mention that uh, was watched in November is a rewatch. I've seen this movie before. It's the Illumination Grinch movie. Uh, I caught it on TV one one night, and uh, I just wanted to. Uh... That's a rare occurrence, at least nowadays. Yeah, <laughs> I just wanted to read someone's review for the Illumination Grinch movie. It's very simple. He said, one star when the guac costs extra. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Solid review. All oh right, all God. right, all right. <laughs> and that was my November. So uh, November was a, a big month for me. A lot of you watches, though. December is the big one. That's the big one. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm just going to speed run my November. Just because um, I've been recording for like three and a quarter hours. <laughs> so I watched, I saw one. Apocalypse Now, Saw 2, Five Nights at Freddy's, Loki Season 3, uh, Season 2, sorry. Oh right. yeah, I also watched Loki Season 2, I forgot to mention it. Saw 3, Asteroid City, <laughs> Scott Pilgrim takes off, fantastic, you guys should watch it if you haven't seen it. Solid, really good. Um, really solid, it was a surprising twist on what everyone was expecting, and I think it did it really well. I don't know why it says I watched Ted 2 for the first time, i definitely seen that, but <laughs> Ted, Ted 2. <laughs> Um, Flushed Away. Flushed Away was December, but uh, yeah, I, I forced Pat to watch it. Scott Pilgrim Takes Off is the last November movie that was not a rewatch, but I did watch many movies in November. Um, I'm just not talking about the rewatches. 
December is the big one. A lot of first timers for me, but I'll let Lib take off with December. All right, December. Uh, for me was pretty short. Pat mentioned Flushed Away, so we because we were talking about DreamWorks movies, and then Pat said he never saw Flushed Away. So as soon as I heard that, I immediately put it on. Uh, tell us what you thought about it, Pat. That was fine. I, I didn't love it, honestly. I don't know what I was expecting because I, I had never seen it, and I had never even heard people talk about it before. I didn't catch it as a kid because I was 10, probably the ripe age for someone to have enjoyed this at the time, but I didn't watch it. And watching it for the first time as a 27-year-old adult, that was fine. I enjoyed it. I want to watch it again, though. I think I, I think I'm good. I, for one, love this movie. I think it's one of DreamWorks' best. I don't agree. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a, it's a solid movie. I it's not Ardman's it. best, I'll say that. No, it's not Ardman's best. What I say is Ardman's best is probably the last thing most people would say is Ardman's best. My, I think Ardman's best movie is Arthur Christmas. But I know it doesn't really feel like Ardman because it's not even stop motion. Like, at least what Flushed Away is not stop motion either, but at least they animated it to look like stop motion. But for Arthur Christmas, it's just straight up CG. But I, I do also I do think it's Ardman's best movie, even though it's not stop motion. If we're talking about stop motion movies only, then uh, Chris of the Were Rabbit is the best one. But I don't think it's like even a top ten Jim Brooks movie. I'm mean, not even a top fifteen Jim Brooks movie. Like it's just fine. Yeah, fair enough. Like I, I put like Puss, the, the Puss in Boots two, the, the the Last Wish. I'd put like Trek one and two. I'd put How I Trained Your Dragon. I'd put yeah. like the Kung Fu Panda movies above it. I'd put. Prince of Egypt above it, you know, like, I, I think, like, El Dorado, Madagascar, I put those movies above it. I don't know, I thought it was fine. I didn't, I didn't love it, but, uh, it's not bad. El Dorado is so good, though. I love the <laughs> road to El Dorado. Slept on DreamWorks movie, honestly. Is it DreamWorks, is, they've only done two, no, three, uh, 2D animated movies, right? They, they did... Prince of Egypt, Road to El Dorado. And Sinbad, right? Sinbad. Yeah. yeah I, need, I, I forgot to, about Sinbad. I need to cut you guys off for a second since I was looking through Jim Mark's movies. I didn't know this existed. In 2010, they released a movie called Scared Shrekless. Yeah, that's yeah, that was the that's the Halloween special. Yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> you they, didn't know? There's more. There's a, there's more of Dude, those. Dude, Shrek there. the Halls. <laughs> <laughs> I know about I know about Shrek the Halls. Oh man, yeah, and um, yeah. So flushed away in December. I caught Home Alone on TV. Love Home Alone. Four and a half stars. I love this movie. So good. Before I had Home Alone at four stars, but after rewatching, I put it up to four and a half because I never realized how good the soundtrack is for this movie. Like it's 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 John Williams, and obviously everything John Williams touches turns into gold. Cause like th this. This is soundtrack, uh, the main theme, uh, it's called, I think it's called Somewhere in My Memory or something like that, uh, is so goddamn good. And like the rest, and I knew that song was good, but th this time when I rewatched it, I really paid attention to the background music and it's really, really good. Like what the fuck? John Williams, really, everything he touches is gold, really. Uh, and then in December, uh, lastly, I watched Killers of the Flower Moon. And Pokemon Concierge. <laughs> because of Flower Moon, we mentioned it. Uh, it's it was good, but it was way too long. I, I think I think the the it did not need to be three and a half hours long. After we watched Killers of Flower Moon, like a week later, we rewatched the Batman, which is the same length as Killers of Flower Moon. It felt shorter because the Batman used its time more effectively than Killers of the Flower Moon. I mean, uh, Pat said this while we were watching it. I, I will just repeat what he said. If your movie is like, it, it, you don't need three and a half hours to tell your story. Like if, if your movie's three and a half hours, you can cut something out. At least I, I think so. Cause like movies don't need to be three hours. And like, we talked about this a while ago. There's this trend of movies being super long. Movies, they just need to just keep it two hours and under i don't i don't know why that's so difficult <laughs> two and a half hours is starting to feel long for me so me too maybe that's my advanced age as i wilt into the ground and then uh, uh the last thing i watched in december and the last thing i watched in 2023 was pokemon concierge this little short four episode long series that was like uh it was stop motion animated with clay and uh it is really really good <laughs> yeah it was really good 
I watched it too. Adorable. I need a hundred more episodes. Yeah, I, I want more of this. My only problem with it is there was no Wulu. Wulu was not in the show. Please give me Wulu. If you don't give me Wulu, I will rate the show one star. <laughs> There's a Wulu Funko Pop coming up. I'll buy it for you. Thank you. And that's my December and that's my 2023. My December is... I uh, watched. This was my Oscars month. This is when I started watching all my 2023 movies. Getting ready for the Oscars next year. I watched... The bulk of it this year, December, will start, I guess. So I watched Flushed Away, we talked about it. I watched a little, I went to a Christmas party, and I don't know why I keep finding myself in a situation where people put on movies at parties where we're supposed to be drinking at, but then we drink and watch movies. I didn't mention it earlier, but I went to a Halloween party, and they put on Nightmare Before Christmas, and we just watched that while drunk. Then I watched, for Christmas, we watched Christmas at the Holly Hotel. This movie is hilariously awful. I had so much fun watching this movie. It's dog shit. And all I will say is, there's a character in this movie, she's one of the main characters, his grandmother. Her name is Grandma Williams. She's the character that will save Hollywood. Put <laughs> Grandma Williams in Marvel movies, they'll be good again. Put them in, put her in all the movies, they'll be good again. She will save Hollywood. The af- <laughs> after Christmas at the Holly Hotel, I watched Rebel Moon Part 1, A Child of Fire. This is the new uh, Zack Snyder movie, Zack Snyder's Star Wars movie. So your Oscars movie watch, huh? Yeah, we, we're not there yet. We're not there yet, Steph. I watched Rebel Moon. Okay. Grandma Williams could not save this one. This was <laughs> one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. It's really bad. It is it is so boring. So awful. And not even the lightsabers fights were cool. It's just bad. And then it, then it begins. I watched uh, Steph jump in at any point, because I know you've seen a lot of these movies too. Jim Scenario, which we talked about. Fantastic movie. I liked it a lot. I think I liked it more than Steph did. I watched Bottoms, uh, another raunchy comedy that came out last year. This movie is basically Fight Club, but for women. I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. Um, it's it's very it's it's funnier than I thought it was gonna be. The performances are a little eh, like they're fine, but uh, the movie made me laugh a ton. It's, it's really enjoyable. I'd recommend it. I watched Bo is Afraid. This movie changed me in ways I can I can never. <laughs> I told them to do that. It was me. I, I told them to watch it. It was me. I will never be the same after watching this movie. I love this movie. Unironically, I, have... I fucking love this movie. I think this movie is good. I would I would recommend everybody watch it at least once. But I never want to watch it again. I never want to mm. think about it again. Uh, I'm unhappy having seen this movie. I see things at night now. I close my eyes and I see, <laughs> I see things because of this movie. And to feel better, I watched Kung Fu Panda. It did not make me feel better. <laughs> um, Such a weird leap. I watched Blackberry as my last movie of 2023. Nice. And Blackberry was one of the better biopics I watched. I think it's really good. I watched it on my iPhone. And that felt... That made me feel a certain way. But... Um, <laughs> I'm Wait, really can you pick. read your review for Blackberry, please? Felt dirty watching this on my iPhone. Is my <laughs> review. That's the whole review. And um, yeah, that's uh, that's the end of 2023 uh, for me. Anyway, it was a good year for movies. Yeah, I thought it, I think it's a great year for me too. But uh, let's hear about Stefano's December. I, I just noticed I did not watch any Christmas movies this year. You don't watch any? Fuck! I watched one in November. Let's start. Let's start, let's start a war. I watched Nightmare Before Christmas. Didn't you watch? Uh, Christmas at the Holly Hotel. I, I did. That was not a movie. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as as the bells jingled and I made my figgy pudding, uh, I decided to once again go to the movies with Michelle. <laughs> so oh, I know what's coming. I saw Godzilla minus one. If Godzilla was ever gone, he's back. <laughs> and boy, is he back. This movie amazing if this isn't nominated for visual effects or any category something's wrong with the uh, with the academy <laughs> something's yeah, wrong i as i was going through this list just a little side note i saw this movie called lord of misrule i saw that it released on uh, december 8 2023 i have never seen this movie i love the post for it as you guys were explaining your films i decided to silently watch the trailer for it and i kind of want to watch it so the next movie that i saw was an, it was a little cute little film that dc put out called merry, merry little batman decided feeling very crispy one day and like yeah you know fuck it the animation looks interesting and it's exactly from like a child's like sort of storybook very ronald Dahl sort of style uh and it's a cute film lib was saying before how we watch Son of the Batman and just put the review as Bat Dad. This is the review I would put for this film. Bat Dad. That's it. 
Another honor, two honorable mentions: The Boy and the Heron, Poor Thing. Two movies I really want to go watch. Yeah, I need to watch both those movies. Yeah, I need to watch both those movies as soon as possible. Um, but then I watched something that nobody was kind of expecting. But Pat, you were talking about Flushed Away. You know what? Another movie that they put out this year: Chicken Run. Fucking Chicken yeah, Run. Yeah, Dawn of the Nugget. Dawn of the Nugget. I need to watch. And it. I gotta say, it's not as good as the original. Definitely was never gonna be as good as the original. I think the original stands the test of time in terms of like how well it was made, how articulate it was, how grounded it was. It wasn't like super, it wasn't complex at all. Set, camera work, story, not at all. But it was just complex enough to get the story across. Here, the sets are bigger, the models are done pretty much exactly how they looked like i think like 25 years ago that chicken run released like they re like i think they remade some of the puppets because like i think the chicken run the current chicken run puppets are in a museum somewhere 23 years ago it came out in 2000 23 years ago damn that's how long chicken run was and this was artman's comeback because they haven't been really doing so much in terms of box office so like okay let's start from our roots let's do chicken run again uh but this is about this is about the rooster and the chicken's kid the main rooster and chicken oh ginger and rocky dude thank you <laughs> I, was, I was trying to figure out who you were talking about but you like you, you just said who's their name and i was like who's he talking about so this is about ginger and rocky's kid now that they live in this utopia they want to try to keep their kids safe their helicopter parenting and the kid wants to explore she wants to go out she wants to see what's beyond the lake but her parents keep getting this ptsd flashback of literally being <laughs> in their own version of a concentration camp you may think what the fuck tune man watch the first chicken run it's exactly what it is it's exactly what it is they're being stuffed, fed, just so they get killed. I shit you not, there's a scene in the original Chicken Run where a chicken's head get cu gets cut off. The first movie was fucked up, but it was awesome. But yes, the, the parents keep having PTSD and they don't want like the kid to have the same experience. And so she leaves anyway, and then the movie begins. I still think people should go watch should go should go watch Dawn of the Nugget. I think it's still a solid watch. Still plays on very dark elements. Like there's this one scene where it like similar to the scene of what I just explained before that the the chicken's head getting cut off. There's a scene where a chicken is getting grinded into nuggets, and the kid is watching. Uh, Ginger's kid is watching this chicken get grind up like through a machine, and she pulls her aside and says, "Just look at me." Just don't, don't pay it. And she has like her, her feathers on her ears. And I think that's like really awesome that they added that. Uh, but yeah, it's still fucked up, but not as fucked up as the first one. Not at all. Uh, one thing about um, Dawn of the Nugget, none of the cast came back. Like it's all brand new cast. And honestly, I think they do it. They, the new cast did a pretty good job. The, the only voice I heard was from the trailers because I, I haven't seen it yet. I really want to watch it because I love Ardman. But from the trailers, like, it sounds like, you know, they're pretty close. I didn't think it'd be that hard to try to get Mel Gibson to come back, but I guess it was. But I think that's... Yep, that's pretty much it for what I've watched in December. And that concludes, I believe, all our 2023s. Yeah. That's what we watched in 2023. This took a long fucking time. Yeah, that took a, that took a lot longer than I thought. But yeah, 2023, like, uh, just to wrap it all up, 2023 was a really good year for for movies i mean we say that but like you know there was a lot of stuff uh like legal stuff that happened uh around the film industry in 2023 but even then that still didn't stop uh good movies from coming out and a lot of good movies came out and there was some good series that came out this year too not a lot that i've watch because i don't really have time to watch shows anymore it was a great time it was a great time for media in general not just for movies but for video games tv shows music it was a it was a good year for that it was a really good year for movies but a bad year for the industry yeah yeah well usually we would uh, move on to a little uh segment where we talk about tv shows but we've been going for quite a while i'll just I'll just uh, summarize what we've been watching lately with one word. Man. So I have oh, this can thing. We, can, you, can, we, can we all do that again in, in harmony? Oh, I don't know <laughs> if we're going to be able to. Okay, I'll try. I'll Let's try. Let's just try it anyway. Count us down. Okay. Three. <laughs> it's also on, on go we do it? On like, go. Yeah, on go. Three, two, one. Can we do it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Three, two, one. Man. Man. <laughs> I can't wait to hear how that sounded. <laughs> 
uh, this joke is okay. So I have this thing where I like to watch stupid TV shows in the background while I'm doing other things. Like, just I need background noise to focus. So I, you know, I watched all of Big Bang Theory this last year. I watched all of Friends last year, and then near the end of the year, I watched. I started watching a Two and a Half Men, and and I'm often in my Discord server watching these shows while doing things. So uh, my friends will come in and and join me for a couple episodes here and there. But right now I'm I'm I am at season eight of Two and a Half Men. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Ajaneth from uh, Monster Hunter Rise. Rise. <laughs> I, was, I, well, I spent eight hours grinding for one item in Monster Hunter while watching Two and a Half Men. That was my day. <laughs> that was my day. Yeah. Uh, but now we're going to move on to Backlogged. This is the segment where we recommend each other movies to watch in the next episode. Uh, and as you guys know, when we have a special guest on our show, we choose a movie to recommend to them, and, uh, you know, if they ever come back on the show, and I'm sure, Stefano, you, you want to come back, right? You're not, you're not too scared to come back, right? No, not at all. I fucking hate both of you. I'm considering firing you from JW, both of you. Well, thank God, am I right, Lib? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, when they do come back, uh, we'll talk about the movie that we recommended them. So, uh, last time Steph was on the show with us, uh, we recommended him to watch... Uh, Casino Royale, and he recommended us Hackers, and that's that's what that was the bit we did at the very beginning. It came full circle two hours later, like just like we said. Foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> Can I read my review of Letter of, of Hackers on Letterbox? Yeah, you want to start with Hackers? I start think we should end with Hackers. Yeah, I, th I think we should. I think we should okay. start with uh, with Casino Royale. Okay. I mean, I'll ca talk about Casino Royale briefly because I don't know if you guys want to do a podcast of, uh, show about it. Well, we do, but it, it, it's on the down low, hint, hint. Solid movie. I do have a question, though. Sure. Uh, two questions, actually, technically. Did I need to watch the previous movies to no. understand what was going on with this movie? No, Casino Royale's a reboot. That's why we gave you Casino Royale, because it's a reboot. Oh, okay. I, okay, so that's like the beginning of the reboot, right? Yeah, Casino Royale's the first. Uh, that does Daniel Craig's first uh, 007 movie, and it was a reboot for the entire series. So... James Bond's kind of a jerk in this one. <laughs> an ass. I think it was fine. I I think and now I understand where I'm at with spy movies. I don't think spy movies are for me. Mm, that's true. Because I kept watching this film and then just, I don't know, no wow factor, no in terms of storyline. I just found James Bond was just a very unlikable character in this one. Vesper? Vesper's awesome. I, I think Vesper's amazing. She's an ass, though. But she's amazing. Uh, I think she also has a lot of hypocritical aspects to her character. Like, she will have a nervous breakdown because she involuntarily killed uh, somebody. And then later on, we'll probably have no problem knowing that... Can I spoil... Like, I guess it doesn't yeah, matter can, for the viewers. You can viewers. spoil it, yeah. You, yeah. Oh, okay. Later, she has no problem understanding that James Bond could have been killed indirectly from her from her betrayal i don't know it's weird i was unimpressed by the casino <laughs> yeah the casino well i mean you've technically seen it before i don't do you remember when we used to play trouble in terrorist town on gmod no yeah yeah, yeah. yeah the map we used to play was casino royale <laughs> no I, I i i pieced it together yeah but like the way that it was shot i don't know for some for something called a casino royale i don't know i thought it'd be bigger I thought it'd be more glamorous, more eye pop. I'm not saying it's not glamorous now. It's still kind of glamorous. I don't know. Thought it'd be more flashy. I did like, I really like this scene. Uh, the first time James Bond and the main antagonist, uh, was it Le Chef? Le Chef. Chef or? Le Chef. Le Chef. The number. Le Chef came face to face and no words were exchanged. It would, they, I, I don't know. And this is actually my follow up question. Did Le Chef know who James Bond is? Or does he just know that that's his name? Um, Le Chiff doesn't know who James Bond is. No one knows who James Bond is because that was his first mission. Like, you know at the beginning of the movie where it's like in, in black and white? Yes. That was James's first mission. Okay. And uh, his mission with Le Chiff is like his second or third. So no one knows who he is yet. But he... The shift does know that an MI6 agent is trying yeah, to find like, him. Yeah, he's like fucking it up, but he doesn't know it's Bond. Yeah, he doesn't know it's Bond. Okay, because that, that, if anything, that makes the scene even better. Because the first time they go face to face, Bond knows who he is. The shift doesn't know who Bond is. And Bond, all he's doing is just making calls. And it's pissing the shift off. Yeah. <laughs> 
like he's doing nothing but just playing the game and he's like the ship is just pissed off about it he comes he becomes like this whiny asshole but then he owes somebody money and then uh, the ship is fine i think he could have He's not necessarily a threatening Bond villain. I think he's like meh. He becomes threatening later on, but like when he has like he's at gunpoint because he owes somebody money. He's kind of like a whiny asshole. Yeah, the the thing about the thing about James Bond, the character, not the not the franchise, is uh, the, the James the character. He is not necessarily a good person. Like, and he's he's a good agent. He's kind of like um like MI six does like describes him as a loose cannon like he's really really good at what he does but he's a fucking asshole basically like if you go back and watch the really old ones he's even more of an asshole and he like he treats everybody like garbage he's not necessarily like someone you would want help like like someone you would want to help you in like for something but if there's like a really bad situation you want him to be there that's the kind of character he is I, I also understood that there's a long period before the movie actually starts. There's the beginning scene, the black and white scene where it's his first mission. And I think that was shot very well. I like it that it's in black and white to like reminisce on the old Bond. And I like the, the beginning when the intro plays and like the really fucking killer intro music starts uh, playing. Oh yeah, yeah, dude. James Bond intros, they're all good. I like it that he, he's shooting somebody... As we, as the camera's in like the barrel of the gun, and I thought that was like, oh, that's really cool. It's very classic James Bond. But then he goes on another mission where he meets somebody, somebody who dies. Yeah, where he's in like Brazil or something. Yeah, like a character that like, okay, I thought we were gonna get to know this person, or like, I don't know, maybe we were gonna get to know this person, but like, why should I care for her death? Also, what's the shift's motive? <laughs> the fuck if I know, dude. <laughs> I think he's just a terrorist. James Bond is like, they tried harder later. Like the older movies, they didn't try at all. They just tried to make the a spy drama or a spy flick, like something, something good. And then f during the Pierce Brosnan era, they tried too hard to be like thriller genres. And then during the Daniel Craig era, they kind of went back to just trying to make a good spy flick. But James Bond, the character, throughout the entire series, like the whole series, is at his best in No Time to Die. And like, that's the only time where he's like, he's like, he has morals, basically. It's the only time he, he really shows his morals. I, I think it's a fine film. I think it's solid. Yeah, I, I would, I would recommend for you to continue at least the, the Daniel Craig movies. You could skip Quantum of Solace. You could just go straight to... I heard Skyfall. that was awful. It's quantum Soul. It's not awful. It's just boring. Oh, okay. Spectre is awful. <laughs> uh, Pat, do you have any you have any insight for me on this series? I mean, like, if you watched this one and you didn't, like, you walked away from this one thinking this franchise isn't for me, spy movies aren't for me. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is the best one. So I don't think any of the other movies are gonna change your mind. Fair um, enough. Which isn't a bad thing, right? I, I think this movie is a little slow. But I, but I think it uses this time well in that regard. I think it's a good slow burn, you know. Mm -hmm. But that's not for everybody, and that's fine. Um, but thank you for well, the for the recommendation. I still enjoyed my time with it. I like the action. I like the cinematography. I love the choreography. Ah, it's just, eh, yeah. it's not for me. <laughs> yeah. But now I gave you a movie that was specially designed for you both called Hackers. We watched it uh, yesterday. It's about to come together. Please go watch this movie. It's, I, I want I want to read my review. No, I think that's the best thing for all of us. I think we should just all read the review and leave it at that. Okay, let's do that. I'm gonna read my review. I, I, I've been, I'm an IT. I'm, I'm an IT guy. I've been in this field for, for 10 years. This movie resonated with me. But I'm going to read my review and then I'm going to stop talking. Because I think everybody who hasn't seen it should. Just, just go in blind and just watch it. Here's my review. I honestly can't tell if this movie is a genuine stroke of genius or the biggest piece of dog shit I've ever seen in my life. This movie opened my eyes and then closed them. For a brief moment, I was all and all was me. But now I'm back behind my computer screen and I don't know where the movie ends and where I begin. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just a wow. Uh, and now here's mine. So my background in IT is uh, basically all basically self-taught. I never actually worked in the field. Uh, I am in school to become a sysadmin though, so here we go. As a network admin in training, I have only one thing to say. This movie is the best movie. <laughs> <laughs> 
And as for me, yeah, for ahead. Hackers 1995, this review may contain spoilers. You're not an IT guy unless you have a skateboard as your mode of transportation. <laughs> you put a spoiler tag on it? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? It's a crucial part of the film. <laughs> look, uh, guys, uh, look, this is, it's, it's, it's so hard to talk about this movie. Like, <laughs> Everybody and their mother needs to watch this movie. <laughs> it's not I think that this long. Is a slept on classic, if you ask me. <laughs> slept on classic, honestly. Look, my in like to be completely hundred percent honest, the movie itself is maybe like two stars, two and a half. <laughs> I wouldn't put anything higher than two and a half. But my enjoyment. I have never laughed so hard at a movie before. Like, even, like, it, I don't, it's su trying to be serious. The movie's trying to be serious, but it just falls so flat. It's like, it's like those stupid movies, like, like a talking cat and skateboard kid and shit like that. You know, like, it's, it's just so high on the enjoyment scale that I gave it five stars. <laughs> Yeah, this movie's up there with movies like uh, The Room for me in terms of enjoyment, and I'm not talking yeah, about it. Jesus about it. Christ! It's Hackers, like... Hackers is my new like favorite shit movie. I, I'm I'm actually a little disappointed that Pat has very limited to limit to say because I wanted him to be to like I wanted his reaction the most. I knew what Liv's reaction wish... was going to be. I wanted Pat's reaction. I w I wish we could have watched this in person. It would have been so funny. It would have been. It would have been so hilarious. funny. <laughs> There's so much I want to say, and there's also, like, it's, it's just so fun. It's just a fun movie. It's so <laughs> dumb. It, like, it's, it's, oh, my God. <laughs> it's so dumb. Like, th there's one part, there's one part where there's a, there's a cookie monster virus on the computer, and the way they get rid of it is by typing the word cookie on their keyboard. <laughs> I just want to, I want to describe one scene for the audience. A giant company has now been hacked. Pen is sitting at the computer screen while calling his boss. His boss is in bed lying down, uh, blankets on his face. He receives the call and says, hey, what's going on? Pen explains, from Pen and Teller, by the way, Pen explains, hey, somebody's um, sort of hacking our database. And he calls him by his first name. He then says, don't call me by my first name. Call me the plague. So the... <laughs> So the plague puts down the phone, and so before he puts down the phone, he says, I'll be there in a minute, then puts down the phone. Cut back to Penn sitting at his desk in a melancholic manner as the CEO and the plague rides in on his skateboard, <laughs> stops in front of the computer, pulls up his skateboard, and says, I is here, and throws away his skateboard he says, again. He says, never fear, I is here. I, I shit you not. Ladies and gentlemen, I shit you not, this is part of the film. <laughs> this is this, a scene. You guys, everybody needs to watch it. Uh, and, and because we all loved this movie so much, uh, we have given ourselves hacker names. I, th th that's what we said, in, uh, remember? Remember three hours ago? <laughs> I am Hyperlink. <laughs> I am Pineapples. I am Toon Boy. And we are hackers. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> oh man, what? A yeah, no, honestly, great. <laughs> like that movie was garbage, but like hilarious. <laughs> great recommendation. Thank you, Steph. I've never, I've never laughed so hard at a movie in my life. Yeah, honestly, I, so I knew you guys were gonna enjoy it. I saw this movie. I'm like, I need to fucking, I need to, I need to show these guys this movie. This is, a, this is a travesty that I haven't found this yet. <laughs> Uh, now we have another trade to make. Yeah. Yep. I give you a movie, you give me a movie. That's right. Uh, I guess we'll, we'll go first. We'll give you your movie. Uh, so this is a movie where... You're, Pat, you're 100% sure he hasn't seen it, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you haven't seen it. This guy sees a lot of movies. Well, I mean, he didn't say it during his... He uh... didn't say it. I don't remember him saying it last year, so I'm pretty All right. sure... So, Steph, uh, this is a movie um, that... Uh, Needs no introduction, really. You know, we should just say the fucking name of the movie. <laughs> we are recommending you, Mr. Toon Man. Uh, a little movie about a, you know, relatively unknown guys. It's called 80 for Brady. I, 
when we were looking at the list of like movies that were coming out in December, I saw it there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing were... the trailer for this movie. Yeah, you were watching eighty four Brady. Is it good or is it garbage? I don't know. I haven't seen it. I don't know. We haven't seen it, but we, no, we, why did you recommend? It? So because because we want to watch it too. <laughs> oh okay. I was gonna recommend Sisame, but uh, eighty for Brady'd be funnier. And I was gonna recommend Who Killed Captain Alex <laughs> because you gave us right, uh, hackers. So yeah, eighty for Brady is your homework for next year. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Uh, but as for your homework for next year, I gave you a garbage movie. I gave you a god awful shit fuck of a movie. Um, you guys both enjoyed Josh Hutcherson in Friday Nights at Freddy's, right? You thought he was a pretty good actor during that time, yeah. right? Can you blow yeah. my whistle, baby? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm gonna recommend you some of his earlier work called Bridge to Terabithia. I've, I've seen, seen it. it. <laughs> That's the reason why I was asking you on your letterbox and you told me it didn't matter. <laughs> I, I, I forgot I saw it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it when I was like a like like a kid. Like we watched it in class. And I'll watch it again. All right, we'll watch it again. Well, I, yeah, well, I have not seen it in like fifteen years. I, I mean, I haven't seen it in like in like fifteen years or something. So. Yeah, I'm gonna. That's that's what I'm recommending you. That's it. I'm I'm stamping it down. That's Bridge to Terabithia. That's your home. All right, Bridge to Terabithia. You know, honestly, like to be honest, I don't remember a single thing from the movie slash book. We all we read the book in class too. So, I don't remember anything from it, so this is like watching it brand new. I remember it very vividly, but it's gonna be interesting to revisit it as an adult. Yeah, I remember watching it as a kid too, and I, it's been a while since I've seen Bridge of Terabithia. And after seeing Josh Hutcherson, I saw his repertoire, and I, I completely forgot he was in <laughs> Bridge of Terabithia. He played he the main character. He was a character. wee baby child. Yeah, he was so young. So young. Ah, uh, and he made us cry. At a young age, he made us all cry. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Like, oh, I'm spoiling. He dies at the end, doesn't he? No, no. There's a reason why he makes us cry, but, like, he makes us cry. I remember someone dies in this in this book. I forgot who. You're right. I'm not going to tell you. Uh, but that's my that's my recommendation. And, and that's... You're, I'll, I'll take your recommendation in stride. All right. That's your recommendation, and then that's the episode. Yeah, well, geez, what a what a long one, huh? As I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is for the audience. I had to leave an hour ago. <laughs> But, uh, oh fuck! Just, just for you. I'm still here. <laughs> where, where did you have to go? Don't worry about it. That's 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 for me though. Now. All right. Well, thank thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. Thank you, Stefano, for joining us again for another episode. It's been a blast, Most dude. Appreciate it. We'll uh, we'll do this again in 2025. Yeah. Before we close off, Stefano, where can the good folks find you? You can see the GW channel. We're all there. It's not just me. I've dragged these two idiots along with me. <laughs> Posted a nice little video of a Rage Room video where we all we all break stuff legally. Yeah. The legal confines of a room. Hey, we got some more stuff going. Uh, coming. Can't speak. <laughs> we got more stuff coming on the channel. And one very important announcement that I'm going to make uh, very soon that would probably change the whole channel itself. But stay tuned for that. And yeah, so yeah, go ahead, check out Jazz Walkers on YouTube. Also, check out uh, uh, YT Tune Man on Twitter. That's his Twitter. <laughs> Why am I Twitter? Uh, I don't know. People want to follow you, dude. Do they? <laughs> Is their comment saying <laughs> I don't know. They want to keep up with what you're doing. You know, like every time every time a new video gets posted, uh, you put it on Twitter. So you go ahead, yeah. But seriously, go check out Jazz Walkers on YouTube. The channel's just called Jazz Walkers. We have an awesome, hilarious new video up there right now where we break things legally. It's great. And uh, where can you find us? Well, you can find us on any streaming platform. Uh, not streaming. Sorry, <laughs> we're talking about movies a lot today. First of Real is coming on HBO. <laughs> Fresh of the Real on Disney Plus. <laughs> After we dogged on it. Can you imagine? <laughs> oh man. Uh, no, I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening. If you like this episode, you want to see more, make sure to follow us on our social medias, our uh, Instagram and our X, aka Twitter. I'm still going to call it Twitter. Fuck you, Elon. Uh, you can also <laughs> find us on all of your favorite podcast apps and podcast platforms, as well as the good old YouTube. 
And if uh, you are watching on Spotify or YouTube, make sure you scroll down and leave a comment. Tell us what you thought about the episode. We really love hearing your feedback. Speaking of hearing your feedback, make sure to fill out our little uh, recommendation thing that we have on our uh, link tree. That's linktr.ee slash fresh off the reel. No spaces, no caps. There you could find a place where you can recommend us a movie or TV show. We'll take that recommendation and we'll make it into an episode. So let's get those going, coming guys. We're back 2024. Sorry for not being in 2023. <laughs> Uh, we're we'll, we're we'll, we'll making our comeback. We're doing uh we're doing we're pulling an Ardman. We're making our comeback. Uh, but once again, one final thank you to Stefano for joining. Oh, it's my it's my absolute pleasure. You guys are all are awesome. Thank well, thanks, dude. <laughs> I wanted to let the audience know. <laughs> <laughs> this has been Hyperlink Pineapples and Toon Boy signing off the internet. See you in a theater near you. Good night, everybody. Bye. -bye. Until we get there. Yeah, I think so too, Fed. <laughs> so you went robot there. <laughs> oh, okay, it wasn't just me. I thought my connection was shit. <laughs>